check, 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 check. Damn, there's a lot of people streaming The Phantom Pain right now. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, it's the same whenever a new game comes out. Yeah, it's like that and Mad Max all day. Just like everybody was streaming until dawn all last week. Until dawn was such a good game. And Let then just... everybody who was at PAX who didn't get a chance to stream it are all going to be streaming it, like, next week. Let me just start out by saying I watched Alaskan Savage play Until Dawn, and mm -hmm. it was awesome. It was like watching a movie. I, I would never, oh, like... ever want to buy that game and play it through its entirety because I don't think you'd get enough out of it. But I thought the game was fucking sick. It's definitely rent-worthy. Yeah, but I don't know about uh, I wouldn't pay $60 for it. No. No, maybe, absolutely not. Maybe forty, but forty is like pushing it. Uh, let me see if the stream's up, and then we can get started. I can't tell right now. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Let me no, restart. absolutely, yep, it is. Okay. All right, sweet. Okay, well, uh, in that case, let me start out by saying, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dungeons and Dragons, the game where everything is made up and the hit points don't matter. I'm your host, Captain Rob, uh, here coming to you tonight live on uh, Tuesday evening, live coming to you from Los Angeles, California. To my right is Cantharion, played by Chris, who is our holy paladin. Uh, beneath him, we have Landon, my good buddy, who plays our gnome sorcerer. Uh, below Landon, we have Jillian, who is our holy cleric, known as Shadow. To the left of Jillian, so that's the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, we have the enigmatic Kevin, who plays Grisham, our uh, elf... Uh, are you rogue? Rogue? Thief? Sometimes I'm a rogue. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a thief. A little bit, little bit of A, a little bit of column B. And then last but not least, up above Kevin, is this guy that I've known for about 15 years, uh, the one, the only, Joseph Mindsel, ladies and gentlemen, playing our elf ranger. Uh, so... How was everybody's week? You guys ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, we're ready to play. Sweet. Um, so last week when we uh, when we first got together, um, we you guys had gone on a hunt to uh, to try and find. Um, you were trying to hunt down this woman who is set to who is set to marry uh, Mance, the Prince of Maricor, the High Prince of Maricor. Uh, Whenever your your trail sort of led you out into the woods, where you found her body being consumed by like this enormous ink beast, um, the enormous ink beast uh, sort of took off to the sky after being in in thick combat with you, and the whole uh, collective party decided that they were going to chase down the beast. So that's sort of uh, where we left off. I'm going to start out today by reading off a little intro that I've made for ourselves. So, I've entitled this episode, episode uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Episode 4, Hot Pursuit. The wheels of the carriage ground to a halt in the busy streets of Maricor. A thick crowd parted as the prince made his way into the mountain keep. Whispers of his father's death linger in the air, but Mance paid no mind. Hands filled with rage reach forth and push against the heavy wooden double doors that lead to the war room. The echoes of those doors slamming shut could be heard all the way back to Werewood itself. Meanwhile, in Mauricium, Priscilla, the Eyes of Tear, is finally able to locate Jacob and Cantharion as they violently ride across the plains of Oberon in chase of some otherworldly primal beast. She is interrupted by the voice of a small dwarf with peculiar news. So at this time, uh, you all are sort of riding um, across this plains. Let me actually get you over to where I want you to be. Yeah, get us off Rocket League. <laughs> yeah, let's get you off of Rocket League and over towards this right... Not this right here, not this right here, but this right here. Uh, so at this time, you're sort of chasing this, uh, this dragon... Um, the, the hooves of your, of your animals are beating against the ground as you hear these war drums inside your head. You know, me metaphorical war drums, not like actual war drums. Um, but you, uh, 
you can hear this uh you, you can feel like the, the 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 struggle inside your body as you as you hit these horses to make them move faster in, in, in chase of this primal beast uh it's flying like over into the horizon but you've slowly been gaining uh, gaining upon it each time. So uh, each of you is actually on top of a horse right now. You have complete control of your horses, and um, you also have control of your characters who are on top of those horses. I don't think they move together. I haven't figured out how to like combine the two without making different stuff. But we, uh, so you've been sort of like gaining ground on it as it flies away. Bits of ink from its body have been like falling from the from the dragon and landing into the ground and as they hit the ground they sort of seep into uh into the soil and disappear as it as i described like water that you had just given to a plant um so you it, this thing's sort of flying away from you and uh it, it from the back jacob the heart of tear is riding with shadow and you hear him screaming out we have to bring it down we have to bring it down or it will get away uh what do you do how far off is it like is it actually that close or is this just for scaling i would say if you, you i mean you're riding like in a in a full on sprint on these horses and you've been gaining gaining ground on it so it's not it's not too terribly far away. Imagine like uh, like fifty yards. So half a football field away, you can see this enormous beast that's flying off in the distance. Obviously farther away than it is right here, but I'm sort of putting it into perspective for anybody who might be watching the stream right now to make sure that they can actually see that there's a dragon here. There's a dragon. There's a dragon. There's a dragon. Would it be within sixty feet of me? Um, I would say that if you if you were able to get your horse to move forward faster, you could probably get within sixty feet of the dragon. The creature. I'm not gonna call it a dragon, really. It's more of just a. It's more of a creature. Okay. Um. Because I would. How, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna ask how how much off the ground it is. Um, I would say it's probably about. 20 or 30 feet off the ground it it's flying but appears to be struggling so clearly it's wounded but um it's it doesn't appear to be like mortally wounded at this time so like hypothetically like even if i stood on my horse i probably couldn't like stand up and reach it with my sword um i mean i wouldn't want to try that i think with someone else's assistance you might be able to you might be able to you know are you are you trying to mount a flying dragon, Cantharion? Well, I don't. So I don't have any. I have. I just. I'm, I'm melee. I got no ranged attacks whatsoever. So I'm just trying to figure out why, what I can actually do to this guy. I mean, whatever you want to try and do, we're uh, we are open to those to those possibilities. Now I would like to try to urge my horse faster to try to gain some ground on it to get within the sixty foot radius. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that that's probably, um, what would, you, what would you say, like, horse riding is? Would that be, would that be survival? Is there a survival um, it's skill? Anim there's animal handling. Animal handling? Athletics, acrobatics. Oh, yeah, animal handling. Is there actually an animal handling skill? Yeah. I do not know that. Alright, in that case, we'll do animal handling. So go ahead and roll a d20 on animal handling, and I'm gonna say that, uh, that, uh, Jacob is going to assist you. So go ahead and give yourself uh, advantage. So you get to roll two times, and you're going to take the highest of those two rolls. Oh, you get a nice red die. Not that one. Uh, you don't want. You don't want to do that one. Nice. An eighteen. Four. Yeah, it's actually really? pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to say that yes, you are able to. With you know, Jacob, it, you know, you sort of like lean over and pat on his shoulder, and you tell him that you want to get closer, and he goes and he you know looks back at you, the wind blowing through his beautiful long golden locks, and he looks back at you with this you know this war chiseled face, and he just, he just has this look like yes, I, I trust you, and you two start like you know making this horse move forward. Uh, you are able, yeah, I'm going to say you can probably get that close there. Uh, you're able to like sort of gain on this dragon. So now I would say you're probably within, I don't know, like 30, 40 feet, probably. Shadow okay. leading I the would charge. Like to attempt to command it to halt. Okay. Um, do you do you have to roll on command? Is it like a is it like a 
Is a saving throw at all? Uh, one additional creature with a single word shadow commands. I think I have it in my spellbook too. So they have to make a wisdom saving throw, or they follow that one word command. Ah, okay. In they that have case, to be able to like understand whatever. So like, the creature would have to understand common language. I would say yeah. So the creature definitely understands common. Um, you uh, so you're you're yelling command at it. It has to do a wisdom saving throw. I guess I, I'm trying to read through my description here. All right, let me go ahead and yeah, do I'll that. Too. Okay, it saves. Um, so you command it to come down, and it turns back at you. And as it turns back at you, it sort of like roars its mouth, and you can feel the air of this of this creature as it's blowing back at you. And Jacob sort of like looks at it in the eye, like you know, oh yeah, maybe even like yells back at him as well, like come get some. Um, but uh, but it does not it does not follow your command. But you have still gained ground on it. So now you are riding like closer to it. You you're still you're still sort of next to it. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll try to get closer as well. All right, go ahead and do uh, go ahead and do. I I guess animal handling. Yeah, roll a d twenty. Did you say you're gonna try and get closer to it? Um, I'm going to say you get, so you're, so you're probably pretty good at riding horses, maybe not animal handling, but you are pretty good at riding horses. So I'm going to say that you probably can get like a little bit closer, but not within melee range with an 11 and a 10. You're just sort of, you know, average. Um, however, if you had like some other idea of like what, what you wanted to do, then, then go ahead. The, the, the creature, uh, continues to flap its wings and try and get farther away from you but it 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 can't sort of break uh that gap you're you're sort of like caught up to it and and keeping keeping pace is um uh what's his name uh is jacob here with us yeah jacob is on the horse with shadow Jacob is actually the one who's riding, who's driving the horse with Shadow. Shadow's on the oh, back of the horse. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking it was Cantharion on that horse. Okay, yeah, you're right. No, Cantharion's on the uh, Cantharion's on the horse to the right over here. Okay, I see. Him. And then okay. Jacob and Shadow over here. Gotcha. And Venator and Vincent are in the back, and Grisham is in the middle. Okay. Um. So I look back at Vincent, and I'm like. Stop him! Do something! Throw ice! Yeah, I'm gonna look over at him as well. He's like, Magic Man, get that dragon <laughs> down here so we can put this thing to rest. Magic Man! Magic Man! <laughs> alright, that's my stage name, but alright. But you have to do jazz hands when you do your spell. <laughs> alright, um. I could ride close and get Ray of Frost. I could do that. Mm. Yeah, that's the best bet. All right, go ahead and make an animal handling roll to see if you can gain ground on it. And then if you can't, oh well, that's not going to yeah, get closer. That's, that's definitely that's not, not going to happen. Get. So like you're like spurring this little pony to go faster, but this little pony's little legs are just like it can't fucking go any faster. Um, so you can still try something from back here if you think you can hit it at. Uh, yeah, at I about. got the chromatic orb thing. I can do frost on that one. Do you want to, do you want to give it a shot? Do you have do you have chromatic orb charges yeah. now? Still? Um. Well, since the last fight, I used everything. So. Damn. Okay, I then you do not, not have chromatic yeah. orb right now. You have to take a, I think a short rest or a long rest before you can get it back. Okay. Um. Can I attempt to throw? This rope that I have to Cantharion. Absolutely, you can. Uh, so you're gonna throw it to Cantharion. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna give it to you for free. I think that. I okay. think that you could probably tr toss a rope over to your, to your friend. All right. Yeah. And that'll that'll be me. So does Cantharion know that you're throwing a rope at him, or are you just sort of like? I, I would assume I would say something. What would you like, say? Uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Just, 
Here. Uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Uh, take this. <laughs> That's what I tell him. <laughs> So you sort of like uh, you toss like you know this rope like is it is it like all t- tied up like in uh, like in you know is it all, all tied neat? It's knotted pretty good. Okay, yeah. so you like oh, knotted yeah. up this rope like real nice, and you like toss this over to Cantharion. Mm-hmm. It uh, it um, sort of flies over towards him, and he's able to catch it with his hand. And so now Cantharion has this rope that I'm I'm presuming is probably like you know like sixty feet sixty feet of rope probably. Uh, 50. 50 is, feet. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Cantharion, I could probably get it with, you know, you're, you're less than 50 feet from it, I bet. Trying to lasso that bad boy? <laughs> yeah, could I get it? I mean, I'm trying to think. I guess I could get it around, like, maybe one of the feet or something. You could certainly try. Like, well, I'm guessing, like, the wings would be too big and, like, the head might be too far ahead. Eh, but maybe, it, like, around one of the feet. Do you want to try what and? Do I even do for the, is that like a dexterity check or something? Um, I would actually probably say it's probably athletics, if anything. Like the, it, it would be like it would probably be like an athletics or a dexterity. What do you guys think? What do you guys think would be the best thing to, to use there? Um. Well, I mean, there's no dexterity skill. I mean, you could just like roll athletic. with like your dexterity modifier. True. Yeah, I mean, I'd much rather roll athletics. I really like that idea. Have you okay? So in in Cantharion's history, would it make sense for him to ever try and lasso something with a rope? No. Okay, no. Then I'm gonna say dexterity. Like, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a little bit of a penalty. Okay, when, well, when he was growing up on the ranch, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I'll just roll it as a save. What's up, Reckless? Thanks so much for showing up and hanging out, bud. Uh, so we go with the first one, right? Six, yeah. So you <laughs> you sort of like uh, you tie this thing in like a makeshift uh, makeshift lasso, and you don't even know what a lasso really looks like. So you're like tying like some crazy shit. It's like half lasso knot and like half fucking slip knot or whatever. And uh, you like swing this thing over your head like you know John Wayne, and you're like well, yeah, and, like throw it as, as far as you can, and it like flies and like a wet noodle, it just like falls to the ground. Um, but you're able to like save it and still hold on to it. So you you roll it back up. This you know you could you could give it another shot, but I'm not gonna let you give it another shot right now. Um, okay. I want to try and use animal handling to attempt to get closer. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thirteen. I'm gonna say you get you probably get a little bit closer there. So you can probably gain ground to about here. Okay. Um, how far off would you say I am now? I would say that you are probably about if if Shadow was was forty feet away, you're probably about like sixty feet away. It's not like I, I don't have enough screen to like have it as far away without showing the the characters looking good. But I would mm-hmm. say you're probably about like sixty feet away right now. Um, give or take, depending on how cool the thing is that you say you want to do, I might give you some extra feet. I want to unsheath my short sword. Okay. And attempt to just huck it <laughs> at the dragon. <laughs> I, I want to say something like some kind of finesse, you know, like Legolas sword action, but no, fuck it. Just rip that bitch out. And and just, you, just rip it out and like a boomerang, you're just going to chuck it at this uh, at this dragon. So yeah. um, I'm going to say let's go ahead and do – do you have like a ranged weapon at all? No. So you have no this ranged attack. I have to go with the sword. Um, okay, so let's just do a normal attack roll and add your dexterity modifier, um, and we'll see we'll see if it hits. Okay, so sure. what was it? What is this against? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, it's a seventeen a versus AC. Ooh, it's gonna miss. Damn. It's gonna be a miss. Uh, it's yeah, a miss. I... It's a miss on damage. But I would say that you threw it and you actually hit this thing. Um, so as you throw this short sword at it, it like goes like flying through the air and uh, it slashes against the bottom part of, of the body, but all you see is like that black, some of that black like ink sort of fall off and land on the ground. Um, but it, it doesn't actually make 
contact with the dragon or with the beast spotty. Uh, as this sword flies past it, the creature turns its head and sees like this blade just you know, and I imagine like slow motion, like if it had whiskers, it would like cut off one of the whiskers and then like keep going and fly. So it's like way ahead of you and stuck in the ground now, um, ahead of you. I can see it though. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, so eventually, you're gonna ride up to it, and you're gonna probably like, lean over like a badass and like fucking pull that shit out. There'd be a cool like camera of like the sword, and you're of course like and, like picking that shit up. Um, but as you do that, the dragon turns to you and sees you. Um, the dragon is now going to go ahead and attack you guys. So as it turns its head, it's going to breathe lightning in your direction. So this blue lightning comes out of its mouth. And I'm going to say that it is going to do it um, to any of these people. So it's going to come in this direction right here. So it's uh, not stopping. It's just uh... it's breathing as it's flying. Uh, what is your guys' AC? Um, get over here. Where's my AC? I believe it's an 18. Your AC is 18? Um, yes. uh, Shadow, what's your AC? 11. And Grisham, what's your AC? 15 all right so it misses grisham it misses uh it misses venatar um so you it, as as this like lightning comes out you sort of like pull your horses out of the way and like you know this lightning bolt just sort of flies in between the two of you but as it misses um it misses uh uh jacob the heart of tear because he bends over but the lightning bolt does come in and sort of blast uh shadow so you're going to take seven points of lightning damage. Um, go ahead and make a, make a dexterity saving throw for me. Who? Um, Shadow. Uh, so we go with the first one. So as this thing blasts you, you sort of like fall back as if you're about to fall off this horse. Um, let's see if... Okay, that's good. So as you're, like, falling back, Jacob reaches back and grabs you by your armor and pulls you back on. Uh, but you almost got blasted off of this horse onto the ground. But you're still going. Um, so who wants to go next? I'm pretty much useless this fight, so... You can attempt to get closer to it if you want. You also Uh, have other range abilities. Not with the breathing and stuff. Huh? Not with the uh, the lightning breath and, and <laughs> such. Oh wait a second. Yeah. How Have long we... would it take me to turn this oil flask into a Molotov cocktail <laughs> while riding a horse? <laughs> I think you could probably do that. Do you have anything to make armor, or I'm sorry, make fire? Like while you're. I have a tinder box, but I don't know if that's gonna work while riding a horse at breakneck <laughs> speeds. Um, can anybody, can anybody make fire at will? Vincent, I bet could. I could, but, like, I'd be shooting a fireball at him. Well, do you, what do you, what do you, what's your fire spell? Uh, yeah, just fire firebolt. Bolt firebolt? Mm-hmm. I would say that you could probably use that to, to light it on fire, if you wanted to. There's no way that, that Grisham would be able to use a tinderbox and make a Molotov cocktail and One ride... Horse. Full speed on a horse. <laughs> yeah, that makes me sad. Just all this stuff. He's just like, oh, <laughs> just yeah. juggling it as he's <laughs> burning himself, <laughs> spilling oil everywhere. He finally like <laughs> gets it lit, and then he's just like this flaming horseman as he's chasing this thing down. It was really I'll set myself on fire and just ride into the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Have we caught up to the part where... Have we gotten to where my sword is? Do I have my sword back or no? Uh, yes. By this time, you would be able to, like, lean down and, like, pick up that sword out of the dirt. Okay. It um, landed. It landed, like... And then just, like, landed like that. And as you ride by, you just pick it up. Okay. Um, I guess I'll try and ride closer to it. Should I make another animal handling save? Like, throw? Skill? Skill, skill throw? Throw that skill. 
18. Oh, yeah, you definitely get closer to it. So I'm going to put you... Let's put you up. You, like, sort of ride past them, and you're up in there. You're, like, you know, get, definitely gaining on it within 10 feet. As it, You're so close that as it flaps these giant wings, you can feel each individual, like, gust of air, like, blowing back on you. Can I can I gain two? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Grisham, are you still gonna try and make a Molotov cocktail? Uh, I would probably spend um, a round or two attempting, but I don't think it's gonna work. And then after, you know, realizing that I can't really make a spark on horseback, I'll stop and just kind of give up on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, we can have we can have Vincent assist you. In making the uh, explosive, if he if he's up to it, yeah, yeah. He well, all I really need to do is like light a torch really fast. If I can hold onto a torch, then I could I could. Yeah, I picture you a like taking of... a piece of cloth and like holding it out and like pointing at it. For, oh you know, yeah, like, I definitely kind of doing this while you're you know you're still riding the horse and you're like yeah cloth. Yeah, I think that I think that Vincent is very well trained in how to use magic and is therefore pretty accurate like what i'm saying like when i say you miss something i mean you miss it by like a hair you know you don't miss it by like a mile so if he was like ha like hanging this thing out there for you i think you could probably hit it and and spark it up especially if he got closer to you like you're not hitting something that doesn't want to be hit you're hitting something that does want to be hit i'm just gonna i'm gonna drop back closer to him on my horse and the the cloth wick or whatever i assume it's i imagine it's like a bandage or something maybe um and uh i'm gonna just holler at you um vincent and just uh can you light this on fire for me yeah and then then i'm gonna go ahead and cast the, the fire bolt so you how did how would you cast fire bolt if you wanted to make it like really small uh Maybe like a finger, like a like little a, finger, like a yeah. finger. Like I'm, I'm imagining like what's his name from Dota, uh, that has like oh, finger of death, finger of that spell. <laughs> yeah, like finger of death. Yeah. So you like you know you have, a, but it's like a tiny finger of death. So it's like, Meh! and then like yeah. a little, and it like ignites the end of this wick. So now uh, you've sort of leaned over and lit this thing, and you have a flaming oil bottle in your hand, Grisham. I am going to whip the crap out of my horse to catch up to this dragon so I can get in the throwing range. Alright, go ahead and make an animal handling skill. Boosh. Damn! So you crit it. So as you whip this horse, the horse is not only like feeling your need to move forward, but can also like use its sense to know that there is like a there's an explosive like on this horse, and it's terrified of both you and the thing that you have in your hand. Uh, so you definitely are able to get uh, close, and I would say that you're probably within within tossing range if you wanted to toss this thing. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna toss it. I'm not gonna hold it very long. Okay, so go ahead and do. Let's just do nor like you know like a normal uh, dexterity ranged attack. Uh, dex ranged attack. Okay. Um. Yeah, for you, it's just d twenty plus six, right? Uh. Get, would I get a proficiency bonus at throwing or no? Um, how many how many things has Grisham thrown in his day? I mean, he. <laughs> I would I would imagine that Grisham of all people is probably he's pretty dexterous. Uh, you know, has a lot of dexterity and is very um, dexterous. That's the word. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I I do think that you probably would get proficiency. I mean, Grisham is, he's the type of guy who would, if anybody, he's the guy who's going to be able to, you know, throw a baseball really accurately. In this case, it's not a baseball. In this case, it's a bottle of oil. It's, God damn, that's fucking badass.
Damn. Okay, so you sort of rear back with this giant flaming bottle, and you throw it up in the air. And not only do you throw it directly at the dragon, but you sort of like arc it. Like you, you shoot the J, and the uh, the top <laughs> of the arc literally collides onto its back into like this enormous fireball. And there's like you know this uh, the black ink like flies everywhere, and you can see it like sort of rear its head back, and it screams out as it. Uh, as it falls down into the ground and collides into the dirt. Um, as it lands, it's been flying so fast in that direction that it sort of drags itself against the ground and like kicks up this dirt behind it. Um, and it, you can see like 10 feet away, like as it was fly actually, no, I'm gonna say, as it crashes into the ground, it slams into this rock that was in front of it. So this large sort of like a uh, mountainous boulder, it slides across the ground and then just slams into the side of that thing. Um, but now it's, uh, it's grounded and, uh, and down on the ground. How big is this rock? Big. Um, we're talking like, not like a mountain, but like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's large, you know, it's like, uh, so probably a hundred feet high. Uh, okay. imagine like a whole bunch of boulders that are, I'm trying to describe what looks like, um, there's a place out here in California called, uh, Joshua Tree that has like all these bouldering, all these bouldering rocks that you can climb on top of. That's what I'm imagining. So am I going to have to like put the brakes on this horse like right now or else I'm going to smack into this rock myself? I, well, I mean, your horses probably stop a whole lot faster than a giant beast flying through the sky. Is it... Is the grade low enough that we could ride up it, or is it just... I would say you no, know, you probably couldn't ride up it. Okay. Um. Yeah, I want to get up next to it, jump down, and take a swing at it. All right, go ahead and do that. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, that. we'll get we'll get rid of this horse here. But that was my friend. Uh, we can we can bring him back. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> Can you move this character right now, Landon? Alright, cool. Alright, so you want to go up and take a swing at it? Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. So as you, you you like pull your sword back, and as you pull it down, you swing, and what looks like is its face like looking back at you with these giant sort of like green and red eyes. Uh, as you swing down, it's almost like the face has completely disappeared. Uh, nice. Okay. So as you swing down, you like sort of cut directly through it and where the face once was there's like nothing and you just cut straight into the ground and that black goo like lands on the ground what you see is like the entirety of the body of this dragon sort of like turns into that liquidy black viscous ink and it uh there's this giant crack inside of this uh inside of this this rock face and it goes inside that crack imagine like alex mack from uh you remember that you remember that Nickelodeon show with like Alex Mack she would like turn down into a puddle and then like go underneath doors it like went inside this uh this giant rock face so i'm going to go ahead and move you guys over to this which is sort of an idea of what i thought this rock face kind of looked like yeah. kind of sort of looked like so it's like this uh it's not like a mountain, but it's like a series of boulders that are all sort of connected to one another. So, uh, yeah, what do you do now? Can what I um, get behind the dragon to actually reach out and touch it? There. So as of right now, the, the, the creature is not even there. It like just turned into liquid and then went inside these cracks in the, in the rock. Okay, uh... would I be able to touch that you could try yeah is it still on fire um it i would say that yes the fire it, it was sort of on fire but it like as it went down it sort of brought the fire with it like into 
into the into the earth, the cracked Has it earth. Left any of like that black residue anywhere? There's still some there, yeah. Because I want to touch that and try to identify it. Okay, yeah, you definitely could do that. Um, go ahead and uh, go. Yeah. So, do you have to make a roll on that at all? Did you identify? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't see anything about a roll that I need to do. If the casting time is one minute. Sorry, you can't hear Kevin talking to me. <laughs> I'm going to say that you... I, I think it's probably just an ability that you can use um, to help like, identify objects. If I were to touch a creature through casting, I would learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Um, if magic was used to create something, I'd be able to learn which spell created it. Okay. So when you when you touch this black goo, you can definitely tell that it is magical. Um, but as far as you can see, there's no magical spells that are affecting it that are reminiscent of what you have seen when you've been fighting this creature. So there's there's nothing that tells you whenever you touch and whenever you identify this black liquid, nothing there's nothing can associate it with. nothing you can associate it with lightning. There's nothing that you can associate it with uh, as far as like as far as you're trying to identify this with the creature that you just saw. Nothing, like you you, you can't tell anything at all. May I do uh, detect magic? Absolutely. Uh, I can sense magic within thirty feet of you. It's action to see a faint aura around visible creatures. It's blocked by one foot of stone. So you can you can tell that this black viscous goo that that that, that she's holding on to is mm -hmm. definitely magical, and you can also feel like even more like a very very strong source of magic emanating from inside of this this giant rock face in fact uh vincent can feel it like just passively that there's something inside this giant rock face that is that has immense sort of power can we do some kind of either perception or nature check to find out if there's a way for us to I don't know, a cave or something to get into the mountain or a way up it or down it or in yeah. it. Yeah. So when you as you sort of like survey the surroundings, you realize that this this crack that's going through the side of it sort of goes up towards the top and then like splinters off. But it looks like it might open up in the uh in the top. Maybe large enough for one body at a time to slip through it. But it's so dark that you can't tell what would be in there if you were to if you were to go in um can we get up there yeah i would say probably with with some with 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 a with a bit of struggle you probably could it's not like it would be difficult like you and i with no climbing training whatsoever would be able to get up there it just wouldn't be easy like i couldn't you know sprint up there i would have mm -hmm. to you know slowly you know find my footing and climb my way up Um, so yeah, I guess go up there and I think I have low light. Is there any way we could peer inside to see what's down there? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're an elf, you should have dark vision. Yeah. So I can't, I can't remember how far it goes though. I think it goes, it goes 30 feet. So you see normal light and then you see 30 feet past that with okay. low light. So a, can I see anything when we peer down into the depths? So you've sort of like climbed up the side of this of this mountain. You're up there alone. Are you up there alone? I went up there. Did anybody else yeah, go up I there would, with them? I mean, I'm guessing this crack is like too narrow for like I, like my first instinct would be to try to follow it, but I'm guessing this like this spot is probably too narrow for me to pass through. It is too narrow. So yeah, I would say I that would... it's probably about like three inches wide and it sort of like curves in. Imagine like it was naturally made by sort of like running water erosion kind of thing. Yeah, then I would have followed him up. Okay, so you... Venator, are you thinking of going in there? 
If I must, yes. Before you do, are you injured? Do you have any wounds? Oh, I'm I'm feeling rough right now. <laughs> Here, so you like like missing like five teeth and like a black eye and everything like oh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally going in. I'm gonna like, come in and lay hands on him and heal him for twelve hit points. Ooh. I'll be right back. I'm feeling better, but still kind of fucked up. Oh man. Oh, okay. I'm still standing I'm... down on the ground. I'm watching them from, from down. Robert, get me one. Can oh. I, like, meditate or something during this? Like, like um, a quick nap? You could probably know. do it. You could probably do a short rest outside. A short okay. rest is any time that you would be... A short rest is, like, you know, you just played a game of basketball, and you're sitting on the sideline, like, getting your, getting your wind back. That sort of thing. The reason why none of your spells recharged was because you went immediately from combat into riding a horse into combat again. Yeah. Um, you haven't taken like sort of a rest at all. So I would I would say that yeah, you can probably use this time to meditate. Do you get your spells back after a long rest or a short rest? Do you know? I can look it up real quick. That's okay. Um, but yeah, you could probably take a short rest right now while while he's sort of uh, surveying the surroundings. But he definitely does not get a short rest if you're uh, figuring out what's going on here. So can I um, can I see anything down into the mountain? Or I would say you see how how far. So you, your vision is probably like thirty feet. I would say it's it's a little bit deeper than thirty feet. You can see some stuff in there, and there's like a little bit of movement, um, maybe some dim glowing lights, but no really large movement, and you can't really see deep enough um, without I- going in a little bit farther. Can I see any kind of like magic emanating or any auras? Can you see happening? magic? Um, well, with, he does with... anything, um, I would like to offer him some guidance that um, he would add an additional D4 to the ability check of his choice. Okay. And the duration of that is one minute. Um. Yeah, so I can attempt to do detect magic again, I suppose. So you can, as you as you attempt to detect the magic that's that's inside this area, it's definitely stronger um, where you are. Imagine like you are looking into a chimney, and there's like a fire burning, and like the smoke is coming out, and you can feel the heat of like this of this fire. Like you can you can clearly tell that you're not in the thick of it, but there is just an enormous amount of of magical energy that you, that you can feel coming coming out of that that uh that that hole inside the rocks okay um is it sheer or is there any way i can like slide down i would say it's sheer it probably it's probably sheer. like like you know well is you could you could probably do a little sliding but i think it would be like a sort of i'm sliding i'm sliding oh god i'm falling, I'm falling. what about um is the rock wall narrow enough to where i can kind of like arms and legs sprawled out to the side like shooting down <laughs> like, like spider so you're gonna spider-man your way down this thing um to me. we could tie that off and try to go down that way i would Do say it. that if you if you tried to spider-man your way down uh you'd only make it down maybe like 10 feet before you can't tell if there's walls anymore gotcha um there might be but you can't I got, tell i got low light vision for 30 you do, so you would see it before you spider man your way into darkness. Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll take the rope that uh, Vincent threw to me and try to find like a decent place to tie it off. Is there like a, a rock or a piece of the cliff face that seems to like jut out at all? Or I would say no. There's not like anywhere that you could tie it off to. I'm going to tie it to myself. I take my sword and I... Throw it down to me. Can... I'll hold it down here. Is there a way I can like shove my sword into the rock face so we can tie it off onto that? I'm gonna say no. I mean, as as cool as that sounds, I don't imagine your normal steel blade is going to cut through like, like the rock of Mother Earth. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot me down. Where's this Where's this rope? Is this, is this rope tied to you at all? Yeah, no. I was gonna say, can I? I want to just tie it to myself then, and like see if I can like help at least guide him down, like like brace his fall a little bit. Like if it's if it's thin enough at the top where I could like kind of like lay over it, I could basically like use myself as a wedge, you know, and then like like he could hang from 
that, basically. I, I would... Come down here to me. I'll, I'll tie it off on the horse, and I'll stand here with the horse. The horse can hold him. It's, it's 50 I feet. Would it, would it reach down that far? Um, there's no telling if it would reach down I've all the way to the bottom. I've got on my backpack, so we can add to it if we need to. So you're going to jury rig like these two ropes together? Yeah, if we need to. Okay, go ahead and uh, what, well, what do you guys want to do? I feel like that's gonna take too long. I'm already, I'm already like getting in shimmy position. Jeez. <laughs> I just shrug. I can't Let see him go. Anything. If he I'm really just wants like, to I don't go. know where he's going. Let the elf go. Give him a push. I mean, I'll try to see if there's like another way in. Like while he's while he's trying to shimmy down, I want to like go, like kind of follow it and see if there's like another way in or entrance that I can find. So just like I said before, when you shimmy down 10 feet, you realize that you can't shimmy down any farther than that. Because it sort of like opens up into like a large sort of uh, a room. And you can see more of the room, but it's still sort of uh, difficult to see the entirety of what is down here. Um, I, what I you do something? notice is that nothing appears to notice that you're like trying to shimmy in. Can I notice the floor at this point yet? You cannot see the floor yet. Get back up. It's a it's a big rock. It's a big rock. Yeah. Uh I guess at this point I have to go back up. So I'm gonna make my way back up to the top. See so you Spider Man your way back up to the top. Everybody else sitting outside. Yeah, is there any other so if I follow it, if I kinda of follow that opening, is there like any other like if I walk a little ways, is there any other entrance to it or I think way? that's the only entrance. The only way that you would get in here. Yeah, then we gotta let's let's uh, daisy chain some rope. Yep. So I yeah I toss toss one end of it to Kevin and help secure the other end of it. I'm gonna make a roll up. right now without you guys knowing. Ooh. You clearly know that you just rolled something. Okay. No, we don't. I don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um. So you guys tie these two ropes together, right? Sure. Tie yeah. these two ropes together. You now got a hundred feet of rope. Uh, what do you want to do? So basically, like Kevin was saying, like he's gonna hold one end and like secure it to the horse. Yeah, I'm gonna tie it around the horse, like around his hindquarters, and then I'm gonna stand and uh, hold the rope and like the reins of the horse, so he's calm and stands there. Cool. And uh, do that. Um, we'll who tied happens. who tied the two ropes together? That would probably be me. Okay. Um. I have some background in uh, shipyards and things like that. I believe you read my history, so. Oh, I, I should probably like reroll this die then. I, I feel like I might have a little bit of uh, <laughs> rope use knowledge from sailors and things in my background. Okay, yeah, you do. You didn't before because I rolled a three. Um, I was gonna have the rope come apart, <laughs> but uh, no, you tied it pretty secure. It's, it you, still could, but you know. Yeah, you're, you're not. You know, it's he knows his knots. You're pretty. You're pretty good, Boy Scout. Like you, you learned your knots. You got. You got your knot badge. Um, so you were able to tie those two pieces of rope together. What do you do now? Okay. Can we? If we throw it down. How much? How much do we have left by the time we get it from the hind quarters up to the top of the the mountain? I would say you probably have enough to throw it to throw it down in there. You probably have like 50, 60 feet. Um. Okay, yeah, I basically want to throw it down there, and then as it gets taut, I want to immediately grab it and just start sliding down. Okay, so you throw it down there, and you notice that it doesn't get, like, taut. I mean, it, I mean, it, it like, like, it does, it goes down all the way. Well, it's, like, taut, like, from the horse to where I am. Oh, okay. Not from, like, not from where I am down, but from the, the, from the horse to me. Once that's taut, I'm going down. So you throw it and you sort of like navy navy seal your way down immediately, like go go go, and like go all the way down to the bottom, and you make it all the way down to the bottom, and now your low light vision can see that. Uh, let me see. I have no way of just showing you this room, but this is the room that you see whenever you slide down into uh, into here. And, but, and now that you're down inside it, you can see most of the room. Okay. Um, 
Is there anything I can see, like any creatures, like where the dragon is or anything like that? Uh, where, w w when you look over towards that area, you see what appears to be like an enormous skeletal structure of what, of what appears to have been what that beast was. But there's nothing but bones, and the bones have almost been picked clean of everything that's on them. Like, imagine like w bleached, whitewashed. Okay. Can I, from the detect magic, what it has the magic, the, what has the most magical aura emanating from it there are two areas inside of here that appear to have a lot of magic coming from them and they're these two areas uh on uh, in the inside the the room okay i'm gonna be drawn like wide-eyed like a like a fly to like like a fly to light uh, or like just like a moth, moth. to a fly like a moth to a flame i'm just like a fly slowly, to a light <laughs> yeah like slowly just start like stutter stepping in the in like the direction of the magic closest to me um as so as you get closer you can feel that there's like an immense amount of heat coming from these areas but uh but you can't really tell what what's going on here because you've never seen anything like this before so while he's doing that i want to uh, i look to vincent and i hold up my sword and i say is there any way you can illuminate the way was I, I didn't think I was down there yet. You're no, not I'm you're not down looking. there yet. No. So I'm, I'm, He's oh, uh Cantherion oh. still if this is the giant rock face, Cantherion's still at the top. The only one who's Venator. inside it is Vincent is Venator. Is, Vincent is meditating anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's uh, gonna take a while too to get my spells back when yeah, I Yeah, I'll just up. light up a torch and uh and try to get down there as well then. Because I can't see anything. So you, so as you light up this torch, you slide down there, and you sort of see the same thing that uh, that Venator can see here. Um, I guess I'm just gonna walk up to this thing and touch it. So there's nothing really to touch. Uh, what you see is like almost like the earth has opened up. Like, a, like, imagine, like, an earthquake, sort of. Um, and so there's this, this, this chasm that goes into the ground, um, but you can feel the magical energy, like, coming from it. The chasm's not, like, it's not like an endless pit, though. It only goes down, like, four feet before it, too, turns into, like, a hairline fracture inside the earth. And it disappears as it goes, as it goes, like, across the, of the way, and then, like, reopens back towards towards the back towards the back area here I want to try to like anchor like just set my torch kind of in the dirt like a couple feet away like five or ten feet away from the rope so almost like of, uh let's like, just say it's like right here where yeah, the where the little light yeah. thing is on the map it's like you planned it or something <laughs> um, and then I want to see because it looks like like from where we can see it looks like there's an opening like there's something over here. Hang on. There's stuff. There's something that way and something that way that we can't see yet, right? There is. There's definitely like openings, but um, it it appears as if like this whole room is like self-contained. So there's more to the different like sides of it, but it doesn't appear to be as as a dungeon. It's almost like um, it's almost like this is just a just a, an opening where where the rocks sort of came together, but it left like sort of the shell area in the middle. It all appears natural. It doesn't look like it was it, like anything was built here. Can we see any remnants of the black goo monster symbiote? Nothing. It's it's almost like it's completely gone. Like it was never here to begin with. Um. So those, those um, like the runes or whatever, that's just stuff that Venator can see, right? That's um. It's like magic. No one, no one can see. Venator can't see it, but he can, he can like sense he can, like, it, sense it. Okay. because he, he has the ability to detect magic. Y you wouldn't be able to see anything at all. Yeah, I just want to like explore like that. The only person who would probably be able to see it would be Vincent, I would say, because he's even more attuned to it. Not only can he detect magic, he can fucking manipulate it. Yeah, I'll just go over to that, like, the southern opening and see if there's anything over there. 
Uh, when you move down in this sort of direction down here, you notice that it sort of it sort of moves off in different directions, just like like, like I, again as if it was all normal, like naturally made. Um, and you can sort of see where the hairline fracture would be to get to the outside. Um, from you can, you, in fact, if any of your friends are making noises outside, you could probably like hear them making those noises. Okay, so it's it's just clearly the way that. Oh, what's up, Riley? What's going on, man? Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Riley is a buddy of mine at work. He's uh, hanging out in the chat right now. Yeah, um, I guess I'll just investigate the creature then. So as you go over to it, you um go ahead and make a go ahead and make a like a nature check for me. Oh yeah, okay. the eights. The mm, Ocho. The eights, not great. It's double, so that, that not happens. great. Yeah, double eight. It's Dubs. supposed to be a lucky number. You yeah. used to re-roll on doubles, right? Yeah, it's, it's like you re and you re-roll th wrong three times, you go to jail. Um, so you, uh, you, you can recognize that it's definitely the creature that you were chasing across the countryside. Um, but it's as if it was. I mean, like I'm, I'm talking like picked clean. Like there's, the, there's nothing left to it. But you can see this shell of this giant, um, this giant dragon that's just sort of collapsed onto this uh on, onto this this plateau how do you suppose it got here i kind of make my way over towards the dragon i don't know i i can only assume whatever we were following some sort of magic is involved to allow it to transport like this it's nothing i've ever seen Can we can we make some kind of nature check or something to? Maybe... I mean, you can try. I, I have no idea what this is. My nature checks are terrible, but mm. <laughs> maybe you could try. Sixteen. That's not bad. Um. So, Venator, you recognize this creature it's it is a it, it is clearly a young blue dragon not a full-grown dragon but it's clearly like a young a, a young blue dragon you can tell by sort of the shape of the skull and the wingspan you can sort of tell how old it is by it by how far the wings you know sort of would have gone you're probably aiming for something like you know it was probably like 40 45 years old something like that so not not very old at all um it, you've seen dragons in this world before. Uh, although you haven't really... Magical creatures don't really exist. Dragons are more thought of as like beasts. They're rare, but they're not so rare that you would have never seen one before. Um, and as far as you know, a dragon wouldn't have any natural enemies. They're sort of like the, the, the top of the food chain. Um, so there's nothing that you could think of that would have... Kill, maybe if it was like a baby, then maybe it could have been killed by like a like a grizzly bear or something like that. But this thing looks like it's been again like picked clean. Like there's no, there's there's not even any blood left on these bones. It's just, and it's clearly the one that you you can uh, you actually um, as you look towards the the hind leg, you can see that it's missing like two of its two of its talons where Cantherion had severed them in the fight before. Hmm. Um so everything you said I explained basically to Cantherion. And I begin making my way back up the rope. Yeah, I mean I I can't think of anything else I can that's that's really all I can see down here, right? Nothing else kind of like stands out, or uh, if I go to like towards the north end of it, like do I see any other ways out? You would see sort of the same sort of stuff that you saw on the south end. Again, it's all sort of in the in this area. Like it's it's there. The, the, it, it's not a it's not a cave for you know sort of. It's like uh, you had to spelunk to get in here. Um, the only way to get out would be to spelunk your way back out. Okay. And those, back. Um, is Venator out of there yet? Yeah, I would say like Venator probably climbed out and went out back to hang out with the rest of you. I'm wondering if I might be able to 
mend this crack to try to prevent anybody else from going down there after he's told us what he's found. I um, would say... Well, I haven't, mm. I haven't told you what I found. When I get to the top, I immediately... Oh, oh, well, you had, I thought you told Kintherian, so... Oh, that's true. Kintherian's yeah. still down there, too, by the way. He hasn't oh, okay. climbed out I yet. He... Oh, okay, I didn't realize <laughs> Enjoy your down. grave. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> I'm going to bury you down there. <laughs> Rest in peace. It was um, good. I'm going to shout down to Vincent. Magic Man, get up here. We have something for you to see. Dill, is the, um, is the rope still... Available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rope is okay. the rope is still available. The rope has not gone. Then I go. Then I go with them. <laughs> so you, uh, so so uh, Vincent Cli Vincent Vega climbs up the rope and then slides his way down and also ends up inside the. Uh, let's see here. Where is Vincent? He plops his way down inside there. You know, and you you slide down and then poof, like your little gnome body like poof, like plops onto the ground. And uh, to you, the dragon looks much larger, like way bigger, because like you know your size comparison. It's like it's like a baby looking at an adult. It's like whoa. Um, so you like to plop down there in the middle of the room. Yeah, maybe they were uh, trying to summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Magic Man, what do you make of this over here? And I walk over to this aura. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I'll go. I'll go with them. So when you go over there, you can feel the same heat that everyone else can feel, but there's this, uh, you see like this chromatic, like multiple different colors of light that are sort of w like, like a wave uh, that's, that's deep down into this crevice that sort of like sinks into the ground and out of the ground. And um, I imagine like the northern lights, like, uh, and, and, you, and you, can, you can see it. And mm -hmm. to you... Uh, how many times have you seen a ley line in this world before? Like, how many times has Vincent gone hunting? Like, are you? We we sort of discussed that like your character is hunting yeah. for power. Um, how many times have have you seen one of these magical ley lines inside the inside the planet? Well, he's self taught, so well like understanding what his, he's not like school taught. So like I would assume a lot, you know. So you, so you probably have have seen these before. Do, are you aware that no one that 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 only you can see it? Uh, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. So you see that, and you can tell that it's that it's a that it's a ley line. Like it's it's a it's one of those magical spider webs that sort of creeps out across the world. Now, most people don't know what ley lines are because most people don't know a lot about magic. Um, and most people don't even know if they exist. Like, as far as you know, like, the other people in your party can't see it and have never heard of it before, you know? Um, but you can clearly see it and you know that that's what it is. Like, it, like it's, a, it's a spot of concentrated magic that appears to be coming out of the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you mean to do like a, um, to tell what kind of magic it is? Like, is that possible? Like, can I do, like, a check for that? Um, I would say that there's there's no way to tell. Uh, it's It appears to be... It appears to be, like, a cocktail of everything. Yeah. Because there's... Yeah. So, and that's why it's sort of, like, rainbow. It's like, like a it, seepage of magic. Exactly. Like, there. one time it's going to be green, and then it changes to blue, and then it changes to red, and it's it's sort of, like, everything there. Mm-hmm. Um, how close are you to it right now? I would say we're, like, huddled around it. Okay, go ahead and make a wild magic surge for me. So, roll a d100, <laughs> and awesome. then pull out the wild magic and let me know what happens. Do even All have hair those on one. here? Yeah, you can probably, like, manually roll... You just type in, I think, 1d100. So, what's the command for it? Or, can someone just roll it? What's the just command? Is it, like, slash d... Well, I think... I think slash in roll. oh that's what it is yeah slash roll one d one hundred space one d one hundred okay all right so what is a sixteen on the let me let me pull this up real quick hold on one second is all this hair random? falls off and grows <laughs> back in twenty four hours <laughs> and then Joe um, while Rob's pulling this up you still have the hunter's mark on him too so maybe double check and see if like 
that still exists or if it dissipated the, too. The T100 is like a golf ball, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Where mm. is... Golf ball has 241 divots. Oh, wow. Why? I, for some reason, know this. It was like on Newton's apple when I was a kid. Ah. Hmm. I was about to say, how do you know that? Yeah. Like I just memorized it. It was like 241 or 243. I could be... It was an odd number. Monk, what page was the sorcerer on? I am looking this up. I'm a terrible I'm DM. Up, I'm looking <laughs> up divots on a golf ball. <laughs> See if I was right or if I just completely misremembered. <laughs> Uh, it depends on the manufacturer. Oh, I think I found it. Sorcerer. So Anywhere between wrong. 300 and 500. All so right. With a 16. For the next minute, you regain five hit points at the start of each of your turns. So as you like get closer to it, you can feel this magic like sort of coming off it, and it like enters your body and begins to like mend your wounds. Have you been hit Forever? at all in combat? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still no, four under. just you. So, like, where you had, like, a scratch across your cheek, everyone can see that it has, like, that like it's... Wolverine or something. Yeah, like Wolverine. Like in a badass X-Men movie. Like, you're, like, healing as you, get, like, get, get close to this thing. So, for the next, uh, for the next minute, every time you have a turn, you regain five hit points. Yes. If only Wolverine were the size of a gnome. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, though. <clears throat> I mean, you could have done other things, like you could have lost all the hair on your body, or thrown a fireball directed on yourself. Um, he just combusts. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh this is cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's what you know. That's what that's what you know. You have not shared that information with anybody. Well, they can see that it's healing me. You know, oh, I'm not staring at you. I'm staring at the thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, then I'll, I'll just let them know. You know, this shit's healing me. It's happening. <laughs> I feel a lot better all of a sudden. <laughs> He's a little, little less drunk from the alcohol. Yeah, it's like Earlier, yeah, the hangover. Yeah. It's cured. <laughs> it's like a magic. Yeah, the hangover, hangover that you had from before. It's like it's like cured now. You feel you feel a whole lot better. Um, from the outside, you can hear Jacob, the Heart of Tear, sort of yell out, uh, "Cantharion, what do you see in there?" Just some old bones, a decayed dragon. Uh, it appears the creature we were facing was some twisted form of it. Yeah, that's true. Um, based on what Cantharion said, is, is my hunter's mark still active? Like, can I sense that beast anywhere? You cannot. Um, as far as you know, the hunter's mark is not guiding you towards the beast. It's guiding you towards that, that break into the ground. The, like, the one that we're in, you mean? Or, like... Oh, you mean like the ma like the magical ore that we're standing over? Yeah. Can we actually go in there? Go in what? Like into the fissure? Yeah, you can try. Yeah. You said something like what, four feet? Yeah, it's probably like four or five feet deep. I'm gonna like step into it, like. Just, so yeah, you yeah, sort I of can like tell them that it's not harming me. You know, if it if it is healing me, then it's not like, you know. You poison. jump into the divot, and there's just nothing. Oh, okay. Like, like you're like looking around, and you see nothing. As far as what uh, Vincent can see, Vincent can see like the 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 web is like sort of like entering your back, and then as it leaves you, it's leaving like through the orifices of your body before it like comes together. So he can see it like come through your nose and out your mouth and like out your ears and it's like so it like enters your body from the back and then leaves and like comes That's back disgusting. together yeah can i can i feel that at all no not at all i have, I have a look of disappointment on my face <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah I, I don't know i guess we lost it jacob the heart of tear yells back he goes what do you mean it's not in there Say, brother, come see for yourself. The the creature appears to be dead, but at the same time, not here at all. Jacob, Jacob's like, that's it. That's impossible. And like climbs up the rope and like plops himself down inside there with you guys. Let me find. Where's Jacob, the heart of tear? Blah. 
He's within all of us. So Jacob comes down and he like sort of uh, observes the beast and he goes, this is impossible. Where could it have gone? I've never seen anything like it in my life. Just, what do you make um, of it? He looks he looks back to you and looks back at the back at the creature. Well, I mean clearly it's a a dragon of some sort, but I <laughs> I've never so. seen anything like this before. Do you, Venatar, do you know what this is? Um, I do, and I gave him that speech that you gave earlier about. The so it's a yeah, it's young a young blue, blue dragon. dragon, and he look and he looks at you. He says, "But a young blue dragon. This was this looks nothing nothing like a blue dragon whatsoever." Can I explain to him all the the wing size and span and the bone structure and things and what I observed earlier and told Cantharion. He uh he calls out to uh to to Shadow, Shadow, do you still have that specimen? Yes, right here. Do you like plop down into the um, into the cave as well? I, I I think I'm just gonna put it into a vial and um, try to lower it down. So you like lower it down and then like run out of string and it sort of unties and as it falls it like zooms in on it like it's gonna crash into the ground and then Jacob the heart of tear like reaches out and, and catches it like you know like a badass uh, and he looks at the glass and inside the glass this sort of like black viscous goo is like attacking the sides of the of the bottle um and he uh he looks at it and shakes it and he can't tell and um he goes uh he goes i cannot but feel like this is more than than meets the eye um vincent can you sense this anywhere yeah, it's like uh, seeping out of the ground. <laughs> he goes, uh, he goes seeping out of the ground. What do you mean? It's coming out of all these these holes. Uh, and he looks at you like you're a little crazy because he looks he looks like down in the hole and he can't he can't see anything in the hole. By the mm -hmm. way, uh, and he's like, but what, what are you talking about? There's nothing here. Yeah, there's uh, there's magic pouring out of it. Um, <laughs> Most people can't see it, but uh, people like me can. What does it look like? Uh, well, you wouldn't know what the northern lights are, so just a barrage. Is that like a, a word I could use for a it? A barrage is a word, yes. Yeah. <laughs> of like color changing spectrum kaleidoscope thing. Huh. That's what it looks like. He uh he lowers like the glass vial towards it, and the and the black like gooeyness like attempts to like go through like. The, the the bottom of the bottle and it's almost like it's trying to get in and he uh he looks back and he says uh he says i believe that whatever this creature is it was controlling the dragon and he looks back at like this giant skeletal structure um and he says uh he says and i think in some way it consumed it And then I just look at him and I say, I see no recourse but to return to Mauricium and report what we found. He uh, he holds the bottle and he sort of like tosses it over to Cantharia and he goes, I believe you are correct, brother. We must go to Priscilla and determine what exactly it is that we're dealing with here. Maybe she will have a better idea of where our next course of action should be. Yeah, wait, um, real quick. Did you see Big Hero 6, Rob? Uh, no, but I really wanted to see it because I heard it was really good. Why? I thought it was like, it was like a scene where there's like a glass thing and like the thing is trying to get out of the glass and it's pointing in a certain direction. I thought that's what you were getting at. No, but I imagine it's probably very similar to that. Yeah, like you could like move the glass and it would like just change its course. It was basically like a compass to show you which way to go. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's, it's more, I was imagining like more like a, like flubber. Um, like okay. a flubber in a bottle. Uh, but yeah, he's, he tosses it over Cantharion. And uh, he sort of agrees that, you know, probably Priscilla would have the best course of action. Alright, so I head back up and 
uh, let the folks back up top know uh, our next destination. We plan on riding to Mauricium to find out what we're dealing with. Do you all follow him out? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. Okay, so I'm going to say that you guys all come back out here. Uh, this is not here anymore. This has disappeared. Um, so you guys all come back out here, and you're all sort of grouped up. Um, and then go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do here. Jacob follows you out and, and agrees. He said he says, I, I believe Mauricium is the next best place to go. Uh, hop on my horse and start going that way. Oh, we ride. So you all sort of get up on your horses. You can see that the sun is starting to is starting to set, and um, you believe that you'll be able to make it back to Mauricium. But if you were to make it back, you would make it back in sort of the dead of night. Um, do you want to go the whole way? No better time than the first. Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> ah, <I'm here. laughs> so you. Uh, so you sort of like you all you all get up on your horses and you ride off into Mauricium. Um, you do make it all the way there, uh, but it is it is it, it is you know thick nighttime by the time that you show up. Uh, Jacob, the Heart of Tear. Um, oh wait, wait, wait! Before we go back. I suggest that we head to the body of the lady first. Since it is that close. Oh shit, yeah, we froze that lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Only what we don't know that that's a bad idea. That's fine, mm -hmm. I still need to suggest, uh, my characters, we're, we're, I want to go get that body. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree. I'd say, yeah, we, we left it in the state we did so that we could return it. Uh, and explain everything. So that's that's the course of action we need to take. Okay. Yeah. Um, is everybody? Is I don't everybody? Really think we're responsible for the for the woman's body. I mean, are we? You could just send. Well, that's why we froze something. it, though. I thought we I froze mean, it I... so like we could like maintain it to take it back, right? Then who has the note? I do not have. I think. What note? What are you talking about? I think Kevin. I think... The, from the, the, tower? the note that said that she was Vincent meeting has. somebody out there. Oh, yeah, I have that. Yeah, I have that. Because we would need that, because how would they know what happened to her otherwise? How would they know we didn't write it to save our own asses? Mmm, the plot thickens. I mean, we can't prove that it was hers. All we can prove is that here's a note and there's some blood on it. Well, Maybe. Jacob cannot go back, because they said if, if he were to return and she were dead, then they would just re-imprison him. Well, that's Jacob's problem. Yeah, it's not my, it's not, not my qualm. Yeah, it sucks to be J him. J but we Jacob can, can go ahead you, Jacob. She is not our mission. Jacob says, uh, he says, I understand and I thank you for your concern. If you would like to return to check on Rose, you are more than welcome to. I will ride ahead to Mauricium and let them know of your arrival. Seems like a good idea. What say you guys? I'm gonna go to Rose. Yep, me too. Well, I'm getting paid to, to travel with Cantherion, so wherever Cantherion says we're going is where I'm going until this is done. Yeah, let's let's head head that way, and I just uh, nod at Jacob and. Uh, Very well then. So you're Same letting way. you're letting Jacob go back to Mauricium alone then? Okay. Uh. Jacob is. I mean, yes. uh, <laughs> Jacob goes off and he rides towards Mauricium. Meanwhile, the lot of you uh, now would not make it back to Mauricium uh, by nightfall. Um, it, you would probably have to rest before you would be able to make it back there. Uh, but you do make it back to the body, which is probably about, I would say, mm, three or four hours of a ride uh, to get back to where you were before. Um, which is actually the same map because I use this for the body <laughs> stuff. So ignore that. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you so as you ride back towards the the the, the moon is now as now high in the sky. It is 
the it, the moon is very bright and the stars are very bright so it's actually a, a quite a bright night and you can see the giant um frozen cask that uh that that Vincent had made but it appears as if the cask has been shattered and you can see like what looks like um somebody took access to it and have actually cut the body out of the ice whereas now it's just ice with sort of like a layer a frozen blood that is uh that is sitting where where the body once was uh um, ominous this cannot be good yeah the, our plan did not work at all <laughs> we put her in that to keep her safe well she was dead whenever you froze her this. yeah yeah she was dead can you still have out? go ahead Joe. i was gonna say we still have wasn't there like a red dress or something Vincent, didn't you pick up a... Yeah, a, a red yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we pick... Did anybody pick that up? I think we, like, broke something there. But yeah, like, I picked up a red dress because, like, there's blood. Like, no, I think you, you picked it up and you said, and I quote, if we find her, she needs to have clothes, right? Yeah, yeah um, exactly. And so you picked up the dress. So you have the dress. Oh, yeah, there was two girls, possibly. So she could be clothed. Yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking out loud. But uh, it's okay. You can think out loud with other characters and stuff. You there can, was like... allegedly two girls. We never saw a second girl. Exactly. It was only reported to us that uh, by the the entertainers outside the gate that she left with someone else. True. Who would presumably be her sister because her sister was in the same area, and there's been no word of her either, has there? We never looked for the sister. Yeah. True. Yeah, because she was clothed. You know, because we would have noticed that, and I would, probably would have. You weren't you know, interested but... because she was clothed. <laughs> yeah. like, oh fuck! Would you probably? Oh Jesus! Oh God! And you're like, like fucking, oh, this dead body, and like putting clothes on it and shit. You're like, here, Cantherian, you take this. You're gonna need it. I hand him the note that we had found before. Yeah, look at the note, read it, and um, is there? Can we see, like, any like? relatively fresh like wagon tracks or like footprints anything like going away from like coming to and away from the the icy tomb that was created you can see definitely like like a, a large group a, a large band of of people had come here and left um, and they sort of went off towards, to kind of towards the road, but you can tell that they're going towards the road that goes that goes towards the the mountains, the uh, the western side of the of the supercontinent. So they're not going back to Mauricium. They are not going towards Werewood, and they are not going back to Mauricium. Uh, I look at the note that Cantharion is holding. So it's the it's the same note from before. It has in sort of scribbled writing. It says, uh, "Meet me outside at midnight. I will set you free." She is free now. How how far away is it to the tower that had the the bloody dress and where the note was found? It's not very far. Not very far at all. Uh, I want to walk or canter my horse towards that structure okay um let me pull up that one that one was right here uh, i guess uh, i just want to examine the area see if there's anything that we let me uh sort of because i ran i ran away because i don't know if everybody else is actually here right now yeah. uh I, jacob yeah, is definitely not. I well, I ran off with Cantharion the last time we were here, so I'm going to examine this area pretty much for the first time. So what you can see inside the area is that the dress is gone because uh, because Vincent has it uh, mm -hmm. on his being. Um, the blood on the ground, which was once fresh, is now dried and and old. Um, you can tell because you've probably tracked people before that at this point it's almost a, it's almost like a day or two old. Um, inside you find 
if you looked inside the tower, you find nothing in there except for that half-eaten loaf of bread which you found before. And at this point, it's gone sort of completely stale. Unless someone did, someone pocket that last time. Somebody say like that was rations. They were gonna take that shit. No, I didn't. I don't take think it. so. Okay. I didn't take it. Then it's totally there. Uh, that sort of and now there's like flies like sort of eating at it. Um, and other than that, it just appears to be like an abandoned building with some like rusted pickaxes and uh, there's these wooden sort of scaffolding that's all around it, but then it's it all looks like it's been sitting there for quite some time. Um, the way that I described it before is it's like an old town uh, where Werewood is sort of like a town that's constantly evolving and shaping and like growing and then leaving the old bits behind. It's like that this was a part of the old town outside of Werewood. Which town is Mauricium? I forget. Wherewood is where the wedding was? Wherewood is where the wedding was. Mauricium is the capital, which is located in the center of the supercontinent. And so, did Jacob head to Mauricium or Wherewood? Jacob headed to Mauricium. Oh, okay. Mauricium also happens to have the headquarters of the, uh, of the Church of Redemption. Um, it also happens to have the headquarters of the Order. Uh... And has the the king of Mauricium is located there. The king of Mauricium. There's no king over the supercontinent. There's sort of like people from noble lineages that that live in like these different mega cities, mm-hmm. but uh, there's no understood like this is the dude who rules everything. Imagine like Game of Thrones. Only there's not an Iron Throne. Like it's just everybody arguing about. Well, I'm really king, but everyone's like, eh, you're not really king. You know what I mean? That's where. Um. So Mauricium is where. Um, Mance rules. Maricor is where Mance was prince. Mar- and Mance does not rule over Maricor. I mean, as far as your characters know, Mance does not rule over Maricor. As far as we as players know, Mance rules over Maricor because what I read in the beginning, Mance's father just died. Gotcha. So Mance is now the king of Maricor. Who also just figured out that, that his wife the, was murdered. Should probably add that to the Google Drive document too, so that everyone can do like a recap on anything that they might not be able to track all the names with the locations. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm trying to i I'm starting to try and like keep a journal with all these different characters. But Mance is uh right now is the as far as you know, is the Prince of Maricor. Which is a city that's on if this is the continent Mauricium's here, right smack in the center. Maricor's out here. Maricor's the last large city before you hit the ocean. Um, okay. On the western side of the continent. Okay. Um, I have nothing left to see here, so I'm going to start heading back towards Weirwood. I'm going to get another beer while you guys uh, talk amongst yourselves. Actually, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. So, um, yeah, I mean, head back to Werewood to rest at least, but see if, you know, because obviously we don't know about the prince and all that, so I'd want to try to see if we get a hold of him in town. I have returned. Welcome back. Yeah, I was just saying, heading back to Werewood to rest up and, you know, see I if I don't personally really want to go into Werewood, honestly. I just really don't. I think it's a bad place for us now. But we might be obligated to explain what we know. Cantherion is obligated to explain what he knows. I'm under no such obligation. Yeah, I mean, I, I would want to, you know, this is a new threat, and I would want as many important people as possible to know this. And while the Church of Redemption is a great force, and will certainly alert the Order in the capital, um, getting someone as you know important as mance on our you know in the know as well seems like a good idea well who are you planning on telling everyone I can. oh what's Anyone up gargamon else? thanks so much for hanging out man happy hunting good to see you again um sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you guys so what do you want to do now you've discovered it, it, it is the it is the it is the thick of night 
Um, although it's a really nice night. Um, it's, should we camp here and go in in the morning, or should we try to go in now while the city is asleep? If we're camping, we should take watches. Um, I want to head to Weirwood now. Yeah, I think I think heading back to the city is fine. I vote city as well. So you guys are going to go back to Weirwood? I just shrug. I don't think it's a good idea, but I'll go where you guys want to go. I think it would be better if we were rested, but if you insist, then we should go. Yeah, Weirwood's only like like 30 or 40. It's like really close to where we're at right now, right? It is. It's, it's like, very close. Yeah. Yes, but they're all going to be very much on edge. The, the princess on her wedding night has been slain. Do they even know yet? I don't know. No. We can tell Do that they? they've taken their party from the site where we found her. Well, back. we don't know. We don't know. We just know a big. Is there group. like horse tracks in the in the dirt? Maybe yeah, leading right back like to a lot of werewolf? people. Moving. There's there's clearly evidence that a large band of people came through here. They stopped at that area. And then when you when you sort of look at the giant frozen tomb that you placed her in, you can tell that she was carved from it, like with with axes and hammers. With Valyrian steel, yeah. It was Valyrian steel. So Valyrian steel carved her from this uh, from this giant ice tomb that you made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's then that's pretty obvious that it was them out looking for and her. And then they went they went west. You said right towards Maricor. Towards Maricor. We could try to camp here and then head that way ourselves. I think it would be best to camp because I fear if we just go in there in the middle of the night that they think that they would probably think that we intended harm. True. Yeah. If they it is were my already, time, yes. you know, watching the gates and not letting people in during the day. And it would be much better if we were to approach in a peaceful manner. Yeah, I just, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I can't really infer anything just from Is a it not the group. same band who, in, who entrusted us to find out what had happened? They were not very trusting when they sent us on this. It was very much like they didn't care if we lived or died and they sent us out. I, I got more think... of the feeling that, that they didn't really have any any belief that we would actually succeed one way or the other is kind of how I felt about it. I don't think that they they wanted us to perish or anything. I they think said that they had other people too, you know, yeah. that didn't come back. Then they where do you suggest we go? Expendable. Well, I think, okay, so, I mean, there's nothing that I could... Like, I don't think Cantharian would, like, be able to divine, like, oh, yeah, definitely this big group approach. So, obviously, the Prince left town. Like, that, I don't know if, if that insight would come to him or not. Uh, uh, we're we're within walking walk. distance. How about if I just go scout the gates and see what the city looks like and then come back and I'll let you know what it kind of feels like? Or if it's the gates are open or... I, I think my argument would be I don't think we're uh, hypothetically if uh, the prince had come out and seen this I don't think we're even on that radar I would say that our group is not a priority he's got other things in mind and I don't know what those things would be but um, either way if he is still in town he deserves to know what happened and if he's not our next task should be to tell him what happened well then let's go not going to solve anything sitting here uh, dickering about it. Let's just choose something. So do you all go towards go towards Weirwood? Yeah. Yeah. So as you leave the break inside the forest, uh, you can see the, the city of Weirwood, which again was a, a bit less of a city, but a bit more um, more of like a, a larger village. 
uh, that was surrounded by all of those by all of those walls. The front gate of the city is barred shut with uh, what used to be two. It's now four guards standing outside and two guards standing inside. Of those four guards standing outside, you do recognize that one of those is tiny. Um, but uh, as far as you can see, there's like guards against all along the wall. And you can see this from far away, from like inside inside the wood. But um, you haven't sort of like like entered the, the town quite yet, but that's what you see from the outside. Kentherion, so, are you sure this is wise? Yeah, so I think, I mean, I think I could assume Kentherion is, is relatively wise, at least. He may not be the <laughs> smartest, but he is relatively wise. So I think, I think he'd put at least these two together. Are you saying that out of character or yeah, in yeah, character? Yeah. <laughs> no, out of character. Sidebar. Because that might be some uh, character is, is pretty wise. Yeah, so if it, as we kind of come up on that scene and kind of see it off in the distance, I, I kind of look to everyone and I say, uh, it appears that Rose was found uh, by by the prince. And um, a scene like this, I only fear the worst. We must get to him as quickly as we can uh, in order to prevent disaster. Um, but either way, we, we do need to rest for the night. So I say we rest. I want to ask the guards if the prince still resides here or if he has actually left because and... we go chasing off to maricor only to find that the prince is here the entire time we will have wasted a day and a half as you as you walk up to the guards uh right as you sort of like get within range to sort of hail them uh you can hear bowstrings pull back from atop the wall um, and you see, like, the men, like, reach and they pull, not not now just, like, holding their weapons at their sides, but they actually unsheath their weapons. Uh, Tiny, who is there, who recognizes you, by the way, uh, slams that halberd onto the ground uh, to sort of stop them. Um, as he walks towards you, he's giving you a look that perhaps you are not welcome here. Uh, I put my hands up to my side. To Is that the out. universal sign in Oberon that, that I don't have a gun? Don't shoot me. <laughs> it's just like not not. I don't have like my hands by my swords, like ready to draw them. Instead, I like kind of raise them up, uh, away from my weapons. Uh, stammering, kind of taken aback by all of that weaponry that's going on around me. Where? Does the prince still reside here? Tiny looks at you and he says, uh, he says, The high prince is no longer here. He has returned home with his bride-to-be. I see. And it looks like we are no longer welcome here, so I shall take my leave. Probably best you do. I begin walking back slowly. Not turning my back to them, but just backwards. Stepping. He's sort of like, and what you what you don't notice is he, so, as he's speaking with you, he's putting his body in the way of the archers. Like, he's, st he's still looking at you like, you done fucked up, because he has no idea what you did and did not do. But at the same time, he knows that the people that you know are the people who he would give the benefit of the doubt. Gotcha. Well, I continue to walk away backwards, not turning my back to them, but and then trying to head back in the direction of the tower. You make it. You make it. You you are able to back all the way into the woods, and I imagine it's like that Homer Simpson gif where you're just like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you like creep back into the woods. Tiny watches you leave, and as all of them sort of put their put their arms away, he still stands there out and looks towards the woods, um, like he knows that you're still there. Okay. Did anybody follow me? No, as far as you know. Okay. Oh wait, uh, anybody here of the group? Yeah, okay. I look back at the group and I'm just like, we're not welcome in Weirwood anymore. 
Yeah, I say either way we, we rest up for the night and determine our next move in the morning. Is that tower structurally sound? We could camp in there. Eh, structurally sound is relative, I guess. I mean, like, nobody can just push over a support beam and collapse it on top of us, just total party kill us. Eh, I guess it's how, it all depends on how bad your rolls are and where you yeah. choose to sleep. But I mean, like, there's nothing like that, right? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't look like... No, it doesn't, know, it doesn't look like the thing's gonna, gonna fall. Blow. It doesn't look like the wind's just gonna blow it over. It's not like... I mean, if, if it's been there this long, then, you know... Oh, yeah. Well, Should I we suggest... attempt to catch up with Jacob? I'm, I'm sorry? I think either, at either, either way we need to rest up before we... Not in the out, middle of the but... night. That would be dangerous to us and the horses. Okay, because I just don't think he would have been very far. It wasn't that long ago. It was like four hours ago. He'll be all right for a little while without you on his horse. <laughs> all right. Uh, I will take first watch because I only, I'm being elven. I only need to meditate anyway, so I don't need to. I don't need a full eight hours rest or whatever. So you all set up camp inside this uh, inside this uh, this tower. How's everybody feeling right now? Uh, everybody I'm, is players. I'm better after Jillian gave me, uh, or after Shadow gave me the the healing hands, but I'm still kind of like bruised up. And taking first watch, I have not gotten a chance to rest. How how are you? How are you guys as as players feeling right now? Do you, oh, do you need a break or are you? You guys Sorry. hanging in there? We can take a quick, like, couple minutes, but I'm yeah. good either way. Okay, I say we take. Me. I say we take a quick couple minutes. We'll play for a little bit longer, and then we will, and then we will, um, and then we will call it a little bit later. But I'm gonna go ahead and give everyone a quick break to use the bathroom if you need to go to the bathroom or get drinks if you gotta get drinks, and then we'll be back in like let's say two minutes. Make a love. All right, cool. So two minute break and go. Make a love for two right. minutes. <laughs> Because when you're with me, all you need is two minutes. Because it's that tense. Nobody? Play the Concords? No? No. Damn it. Nope. Never seen that. Really? You never listened to it at all either? No. Damn. I didn't even know that there, it was like a band or anything. I saw a picture of it one time. but I like I've never really watched the show, but I've listened to a lot of the music, and it's pretty funny. I find it funny. It's my, it's my type of humor. Damn, I'm trying to like edit scenes while like everyone else has a part. It's so annoying. For... Oh yeah. Well, like I'm trying to do like a thing where. Like, you the... like highlighting your stuff? No, like uh, here I'll show you an example. Uh, I want to figure out how to do this. Is this for your stream? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're talking about yeah, like it's just like tedious that. shit. So like while you were like doing your thing, I was just like, you know, you were like, catching up anyways. Um, let's see. I think it's the beginning of each stream. Apple. Apple. Let's go outside. All right, here we go. So like just take this and like fast forward it like maybe like seven minutes or something like that. And that's when it starts. But I want something along the lines of that, but not with so many colors. If I can figure out how to do it, like it's going along with the music. If that makes sense. Let me see here. Yeah, just like skip like seven minutes or whatever. Oh, load times. Oh, commercials. I'm no longer <laughs> fucking. I stopped doing um. Oh, Twitch turbo. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had Twitch care. Turbo, and now I'm like, God damn! I wish I still had Twitch Turbo. Although you meant AdBlock. Oh, uh, I probably should do AdBlock now that I don't have Twitch Turbo. Well, like Turbo. Ray Dad gets like a donation. He's like, Yeah, I've been using AdBlock for like, you know, like two years. So here's here's three bucks, and he's like, Three bucks more than covers that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I got to figure out how to do that because I want that to be the background and then like the picture in front. It's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to do that, too. What, um... Not part of the foreplay, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. I found one that you can make it 
but it doesn't like because this one he can play whatever song he wants and it'll yeah. update it. But I okay. found one that's just like a, like it'll do it to whatever video and you can just download the video and it's the same uh, song ever. That's but. cool. Yeah, I saw one that was four songs, mm -hmm. but you I mean you had to have the songs like running through that program. So the songs had to be on your computer. It's not like I could just open up Pandora and it would do the the volume. Oh, that's lame. Yeah. Let's see if Reckless can find it. All right. So if you guys ready to, to go? There, there's that. If he wants to. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I guess so. Actually, right. yeah, beer back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna piss real quick. Sorry. Do your thing, man. I'm gonna grab a snack while he's pissing. Sorry. We, we we're like, oh, we're gonna wait two minutes for all of you guys to get back, and then we're gonna go do our thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Now y'all can sign. We're keeping the chat like, you know, occupied. No, Joe and Landon are gone. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking either way we have to head back to Mauricium because otherwise, as far as the Church of Redemption is concerned, I'll just turn into another Jacob. They'll be like, Kentherian was on this mission and we don't know where he went, so I, yeah, we gotta head back that way. Right now we can take our time to talk about their characters. It's true. I like this. You guys are making decisions that I did not that I did not expect, but I like where this is going. I like the feel. There's sort of like a there's sort of like a tension, a tension in the air. I enjoy that tension. Hmm, yes. Well it's tough, because as a character as a player you know what's going on, but as a character you don't. And your character just wants to do the right thing in their eyes and when your character doesn't really know what the right thing is, it's like, okay, you know, what compromise? Like, where's the compromise at? Which which bad option do I choose kind of thing? Oh, what's up, Mr. Chicago 2K14? Thanks so much okay. for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Happy hunting. Uh, we are actually just coming up on the tail end of this break, and then we're going to start right back up again. Do you have music playing on the stream? Yeah, I do. Well, it's whatever music you guys hear right now you hear on the stream. Oh, I have that muted. Yeah. I have like a whole bunch of music that I can play. I have to pick it up off of SoundCloud. But there's some sweet music on here. But yeah, what I linked uh, is I was looking for a program like that for stream. Reckless. Like, just to like... An have it on sometimes. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but yeah, it's like it like kind of moves. Like you play a song and it kind of like moves bars and stuff to like the music. Like like old windows and shit. Yeah, yeah, but I just want like the levels. Like I, I linked it in the chat, but uh, yeah. Um, we have not done Pathfinder. This is uh this is actually fifth edition. This is my first fifth edition dungeon mastering campaign. I uh, did a whole lot of 4th edition, so this is the first time that we're playing around with 5th. So, you know, not being sponsored by GIF or Keebler, but I wish I was. They came out with these, like, new cookies. I don't know if you've seen these, but it's God like... God damn it, dude. Does every stream have to turn into Josh, food? <laughs> shut you. Shut your mouth, you. And it's like chocolate fudge, peanut butter, peanut or whatever. It's like, Rob, I know you haven't had these because you're allergic to coconut. But if you've ever had those, like, coconut, caramel... Girl Scout cookies, it's like that, but instead of coconut and caramel, it's peanuts and peanut butter, and it is fantastic. Oh, sounds really fucking good. Right? You should get it. That All right, box. guys. So you guys end up uh, putting up your camp inside this uh, inside this old town, this old broken down building. Um, uh, Venator took first watch. Um, and as far as as far as you see, there's there's nothing sort of going on while while you're there. Off in the distance, you can see like like deep deep off in the distance, uh, deep into the mountains, you can see like lights going on inside the mountains. Miracor is an enormous city, so you very well could see it like way 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 off in the horizon. Um, but uh, as far as you go, nothing really happens. Uh, who takes the second watch? 
Cantherion taking the second watch is safe. Uh, nothing sort of nothing happens while Cantherion's watching. Uh, Venator sort of like snuggles down to go into Elvin's sleep. Um, and Cantherion, you sort of uh, you're sitting there at this. I, I imagine you're like you know sitting at. Uh, let's put all you guys in here. Let you guys put yourselves wherever you want to inside here. Uh, but I imagine Cantherion sort of sitting on the steps, like pondering to himself. Uh, you know what does you know what what would tear what would tear do, um, that sort of thing. And as you're like you know thinking to yourself, uh, you can feel like like tears. Uh, you know that that he's with you, and that he's helping you bring justice to the world. Uh, and a part of you wonders, you know, what happened to Jacob, and did he make it back okay? Uh, we have a follower. Thanks so much, Mr. Chicago. Appreciate that, man. Happy hunting. Um, and you can you can feel and tell that uh, that 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 tear is 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 watching you, and you uh, and you hope that that Jacob, the heart of tear, made it back okay. Who gets the third watch? I'll, I'll do take it. the archie cannon. Okay. I should be rested enough. I'll take the third watch. So Shadow takes the third watch. Um, Shadow, you can hear uh, that there's there's some stuff going on in the distance. Probably animals, as far as you can tell. Um, oh, we have another follower going on there. Trekorin, Trekorin, Tree Corin. Thanks so much for following, man, woman, whoever you might be. Uh, we appreciate it. Happy hunting. Um, you can you can tell that there's something watching you out in those woods, but it feels like it might just be animals. Um, as you continue the rest of your watch, you notice that uh, nothing else appears to show up at that time. Uh, Ibn J- Ibn Jamin Ibn Jamin. It's like, it sounds like Ibn Ramen. Thanks so much for giving us a follow, man. Totally appreciate that. Happy hunting. Um, so next up is gonna be Grisham. Grisham on your watch. Nothing happens. Um, everyone falls back asleep. I can't believe I rolled bad four times. Um, so you make it all the way through your watch, and and it it, lo- it appears as if the sun is slowly starting to break upon the uh, upon the horizon. You also broke my cookie into my milk. Oh no! Um, and I want to say that uh, Vincent, you get the last watch, brother. Um, yep. Ooh. Shit, it's the fan. Um, man. <laughs> so everyone else is asleep right now inside of inside of this area. You Amazing. are sort of outside, like watching to make sure that everything's fine. When uh, oh, we got another follower, Des Dweller. Thanks so much for following, man. Happy hunting. Appreciate that. Um, when out of the wilderness appears to crawl a. Uh, I need to actually get to. Here we go. Advent layer, token layer. When out of the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Why can I not select this? Is this background? Let me see here. Oh, because I'm not objects and tokens. When out of the wilderness wanders like this large bear. Uh, the smell of the blood on the ground is sort of like bringing this bear here. And as it sort of wanders over into the direction of, of the blood, it can see you. Uh, what do you do? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to make this a lot easier on everyone's life and try to cast sleep on the bear. Oh, so the bear's like <laughs> the bear like just woke up, he's like Oh Jesus, it's so goddamn mm-hmm. oh, I am hungry as shit. Mm, he like sort of wanders out and wanders out from the woods and gets out there and then he's like, Oh uh, I'm a bear and you're like, No, go to sleep. And then you're gonna cast <laughs> sleep on it. Uh, go ahead and see if you can do that. All right. Uh, it's just like a D twenty or whatever, right? Like always. Oh, lovely. does sleep does is sleep a saving throw? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a it's like a wisdom or I can double check. Okay, go ahead and check that because I do, I don't think you have to roll the hit on sleep. I think <clears> sleep <throat> just on. hits, and it's just whether or not it, it has any effect on them. Like maybe it, says, on. it sends them into a magical slumber. Roll five d eight. The total is how many hit points of those creatures. Wait, what? It doesn't sentence makes no sense. Yeah, so you roll five d eight, and and creatures have hit dice based on their level. So 
Um, depending on what you roll, like before he even tries to resist it, your sleep spell might not be strong enough. So go ahead and roll 5d8. So do slash roll 5d8. That is not going to put it to sleep. Damn. So you attempt to put it to sleep and it has no effect. It sort of like shrugs it off like you can feel that you were doing something and like roars at, like roars out at you. Um, Enough to and wake like, them, I hope. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, everyone do, a, everyone do a, a perception check. Grisham definitely wakes up. He hears like this roar. Grisham was actually like dreaming of bears, and he like hears this roar, and he's like, "What the fuck?" And like grabs like as he's like rolls around, he like grabs his daggers with him, and he's as he rolls around. Um, the bear is still sort of like keeping its distance from you, but Grisham has awoken. Uh, Cantharion also wakes up. Shadow does not. She is deep in slumber. She is enjoying that sleep. Yeah, I just got back from my watch like a little while ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Being an elf, I don't need to sleep. I just meditate. Can I get like advantage to come out of meditation? Yeah, I'll give you advantage. Yes. That sounds like it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely came out of that. So everyone's awake but Shadow. Someone come kick me. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, I'll, we know? I'll go wake her up. <laughs> Just be like, bear. It begins, it begins to moving. wander closer yeah. to, uh, to Vincent. As it's like sniffing the ground and then like sniffing over towards you. It's a big fucking bear too. Aren't you supposed I'll, to like play I'll dead? My... Sorry, go ahead. Aren't you supposed to play dead in like the, like the case of like a bear attack like in real life? <laughs> No, you look like a sandwich to the bear. That's true. Yeah, it's like a little snack. You're supposed to make yourself big, I thought. I thought you were supposed to make yourself big, and you're supposed to play dead if it's actually attacking you. Is it a grizzly or a black bear? It's a grizzly bear. I poke, uh, I poke my head out like, like, what is that noise? And and I look and I see it's a bear, and I see that that um, Vincent is sitting there, kind of like staring at it, oh, and. I go, oh, it's just a bear. Like, and then I kind of go back inside, not worried about it. I mean, literally, we just oh, chased down a big goo dragon, so, like, a bear is like, what's a bear? <laughs> Who cares? Just freeze it or something, man. I'm going back to sleep. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um. It's all you, Vincent. Don't wake us up with this crap. It uh, it slowly walks closer to you, and now it's like now it's like sniffing the uh, your clothes as you as you're like standing there. It's like it's like looking at you as if you're like a you're like um you're like a like a badger almost like compared to this thing like in size. You like a you're like a large house dog, and this is like an enormous monster of a bear, and it's like sniffing you trying to figure out what you are. Can I hold still. All right, no. go ahead and do a. Uh, I want you to do an athletics check to hold completely still. I think you should introduce yourself. <laughs> Put up my my hand. Hello. A seventeen. Seventeen's not bad. Seventeen's right. not bad. So you're like holding completely still. And yeah, this uh, sense is magic or something. I don't this know. This bear is like sniffing you. It's he's sniffing your beard. He can he can sort of smell like the like what you do you have a beard? Like what do you what do you look like? You're you look like I have a, I have a mustache. You have a mustache. He's like yeah. sniffing your mustache, and he can still like mm -hmm. smell the the the, the 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 smell of all that liquor that you were drinking like two <laughs> days before because you haven't brushed your teeth because you're fucking disgusting. Um, and so he's like sniffing that mustache that's on you and getting getting a good whiff of all that alcohol. Um, yeah. Oh, I was gonna roll an intimidation, but I literally rolled a one. Not lying. There it is. Um, so the bear sniffs you, and as you lay completely still, it slowly like starts to ooh, 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 like wander off out into the woods until it's completely gone. So the bear has left you alone. Nice, oh, um, nice like a boss, like a boss. So it's like it's like until dawn. Sometimes sometimes not fighting things is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, so you uh you Good, make it through the whole night. It it's the next day. Uh, what do you guys do? 
so I let the group know um, while I think we need to head to Maricor, I don't wish to become another quest for another one of my brethren. Um, I sought out Jacob. It took time. It took resources. I think it would be best to go back to Mauricium to try and handle this big threat and hope the mundane problems are resolved by others. I agree. The way those people, that town, behaved before imprisoning Jacob just because he was a stranger when their their princess was missing, it it wasn't justice. And so, let me get this straight. Mauricium. Which one's which? Mauricium is. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have named both of them. Both of them M cities. Mauricium is the capital city, which is located in. Uh, for all the viewers, by the way, who are watching this right now, uh, Oberon, which is the which is the place that we live. Oh, we have another follower there. That is. Flack Unit six 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 Flack Unit Flack Unit six hundred and sixty six. Thanks so much for showing up, man. We appreciate that. Happy hunting. Uh, Oberon, which is the continent that we that we exist on, is one giant Pangea. It's like uh, it's it's a supercontinent. Is the way that I describe it. There are mega cities across the supercontinent. The one that's smack in the middle of it is Mauricium. It's known as the quote unquote capital because of its location. It's really easy to trade resources with Mauricium. Um, there are other cities outside of it. The westernmost one is Maricor, which is like a very large mining area. Oh, we have another follower. Arc Fanton D Arc Arc AC Fanton DC, I think is what it is. AC Fanton DC, yeah. AC DC, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for following, man. Um, the the most westernmost uh, uh, city is Maricor, which is a very large okay. mining area. So Maricor is Mance. Mauricium is Latin for currency, I think. Uh, and that's the uh, that's the main city. That's where you okay. guys originally came from. Mauricium, Mauricium is where Jacob went, and that's where the where Tyr? Or the that's where Church the of Redemption? Is. That's, that's where the Church of Redemption is, yeah. That's okay. where Jacob, the heart of Tyr, went to meet with Priscilla, the eyes of Tyr. Yeah, I just believe Priscilla will have at least some insight on what our next step might be uh, to combat whatever these things are. Because until we stop them, these things are going to keep happening. Can you just pray for guidance, Red? I just kind of laugh and I look at him and say, Tear works in mysterious ways. And uh, while and as I you say that, it like echoes in uh, it echoes in Jacob's mind, and as he's writing, it goes tear works in mysterious ways. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm bound to no no prince of uh, Mauricium or Maricor. I suppose I'll ride off with you guys if you'll have me along. So far as Mauricium. Very yeah, well, yeah. you've proven it yourself worthy. Yeah, they might even throw you a couple gold gold coins for your help. Yeah, I, we could definitely see about uh, reaching out to the church to see what sort of task we want to undertake, and would gladly accept another companion on, on a, a new contract, most certainly. So you is is it is it uh, is it agreed you all are gonna go back to Mauricium? What ho, what ho, Vincent? Yep, yep I agree. All yeah. right, so Mauricium it is. There's that fork. All right, so you guys end up riding off towards Mauricium, choosing not to go off towards Maricor. First off, you chose to let Jacob. Let, let, let's let's recap. You chose to let Jacob, the heart of Tyr, go back to Mauricium alone first. Then you chose to stay here and not go to Maricor and go to Mauricium the next day. Um, so you guys go off to Mauricium. It's probably like a full day's ride uh, to make it all the way there. But it's a full day's ride on rather busy roads. Um, you find yourself sort of trudging down these these uh, these paths. Um, I'll bring I'll bring back up the uh, cut actually. Oh, we have another follower, De Demon Cat Zombie. Thanks so much. We appreciate you giving us a follow. Uh, happy hunting. I'm gonna bring back up the uh, the world map here. So we have Mauricium here, right in the middle. 
Um, and you guys are coming from this sort of area right here. If uh, if you can see, I can actually move this so you can see that Maricor is this city right over in this direction. Um, but uh, oh, that's because I had you covered up. I didn't realize it. Um, so Mauricium is right here. It takes you like a full a full day's ride to make it back there. Um, oh, wait, there's another follower, Sifu Cloud. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a follow. We appreciate that. Happy hunting. Uh, you make it back towards back towards Mauricium, but it takes you a full ride there. You ride on rather like well paved well paved roads, and as you're riding out, um, you look like you've seen better days. You know your your clothes are dirty. Um, you, although you are healed and have all your spell slots back and everything like that, you still are not clean, you know, um, you, you've, you've been out for at least like three or four days now on this hunt. Uh, and as you're riding back, you're passing all of these farmers on the left and the right. In fact, as you're passing the, the farmer with the pitchfork who was intimidated before by Cantharion, like recognizes Cantharion coming back with like blood, like all over his shit. And and just is like, oh, oh, oh no, and like runs into his cabin and like shuts the door and locks it like really fast. I mean, I imagine it's like a cartoon. It's like, oh, and like slams his door shut. Um, but you make it back to Mauricium in time, and it's still night. Uh, most of the city, although it's night, Mauricium is a mega city. It always is open, so it will let people in and out. Um, Oh, there's another follower going on there. AC Fenton DC. There's another one. Oh, D's got like two accounts. Um, thanks so much. We appreciate that. Uh, you you end up making it inside the city. They let you in. And as far as you can tell, there's nothing that's different. The Royal Guard are sort of there to inspect you to make sure that you're not doing any any harm. But you make it back into Mauricium, into the main city. Oh wow, Sifu Cloud donated three dollars. Thanks so much. We really appreciate that, man. Thanks so much for helping us out. Um, we're gonna put it all back in the stream, so we appreciate that. Uh, you make it back into Mauricium. Um, damn, that's fucking dope. That's the first time anyone donated any money. So let me just say that message. that is that is really cool. There was a message, and I actually missed the message. I want to go back and read it, um, but it went away as I was like looking at it. Uh, it's in your dashboard for your twitch alerts i need i need to to check that out whenever i i need to have like a place that i can open up for it um because i don't have it open right now i have all my other stuff covered uh I will, i'll go back and read it i promise i'll read it on the next stream i'm gonna read it at the beginning of the next time we stream i'm gonna read that one off and let everybody know um so we have, so you, you have Mauricium here. By the time you get back here, it actually is night, but it's still open and they're still letting people in. Um, the guards look at you questionably, but they recognize Cantharion as being a member of the church, not so much as being Cantharion, but they let you in. As you're walking up, are you guys still riding your horses? Yeah, I mean, I assume take them to like whatever stable is okay. at the gates. The uh, the guards, as you like, try and walk in with the horses. Uh, they go <clears throat> and they like sort of gesture towards the uh, towards the stables. And that old stable hands there, he's like, "Oh no, no, no! <clears throat> I'm gonna need to get them horses back from him." Yeah, I, I dismount and, and hand hand the reins back to him and say thank you for the the horses. He looks at you and he goes, mm -hmm, and then takes the horse away. <laughs> I'll tell uh, Glitter I'm gonna miss him, and uh... Glitter. You named your pony Glitter? glitter. No, glitter, the, right? the the pony was named Glitter. When we gave oh, it to him. I, I forget my horse's yeah. name. I was glitter like... looks back at you with like this this longing in in his eyes, and uh, and he he can tell you you can see that he's like, I'm going to miss you too. Uh, you know, and there's and there's like this bond. Like, I want you to write down that you have a bond with your horse right now. Uh, <laughs> wow. okay. So everybody has those yes. bonds of characters. You have a bond with that one horse in Mauricium. All right, sounds good. Um. So you got uh, so you so you got that going on right there. Um, what is everybody else doing? Pacific Cloud again. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I will definitely give you a follow. Yeah, I just uh, I mentioned to the group, 
there's there's more than adequate lodgings within the church um, for for this night, and I'm I'm certain Priscilla would still be awake, so we can actually get some business done tonight. Um, as you as you enter, you notice that the church is actually is actually closed off. Priscilla is not there. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah just, just kidding. kidding. Priscilla doesn't Priscilla stay up doesn't all the time. Wink. Um, so Priscilla is actually Priscilla is actually asleep. You would probably have to find some lodging inside the town, but it's a, it, it's it's night it's nightfall. It's it's nighttime. You basically rode throughout the entirety of the day oh. back into nightfall again. Um, I hate to be redundant, but I have to try and keep up with like you know, span of time, like you know, fucking big. Um, so you 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 would have to find lodging, but finding lodging in Mauricium is not difficult. Uh, this is a mega city. This is this is fucking capital. Like you know, there's like nine Hampton Inns here. Well, I gotta have like a place, right? I've got like uh, you know, like some some officer lodgings or something. Um, like, I would say the, the the church has a timeshare or something. <laughs> I, I would know. say the church probably has like discounts on like on like places and stuff. You probably don't have a house house because of how often you leave. Uh, Mauricium, but you probably have like a place where you can get rooms on like uh, on like a discount, you know, um, that uh, that you could go to. You're you're out and about so often that you you you're sort of like a a, a wandering paladin, a wander a Justicar is what I named you, the wandering Justicar. Yeah, I just figured I could check like uh, you know ye old Expedia, and it's like oh yeah, you're a Church of Redemption member. Yeah, so you like pull up your ye old Expedia and you're like you're like exchanging information with Grisham who has like ye olde triple A where they like come out and fix like horses broken legs and shit. Um and you notice that there actually is a tavern that's that's, you know, relatively close by, uh, that you guys can stay at. That they'll give you rooms pretty pretty fucking cheap. Um The Tavern is called the uh the Broken Willow. Or not the Broken Willow, because the other one was the Broken Tavern. Let's go with the Wilted Willow, um, is the name of this tavern that you guys are staying in. Uh, so you ride up to the Wilted Willow, which appears to be, which appears like this. Everything's broken, wilted, beat up. Uh, I like to play. It sucks. <laughs> So you guys are able to make it back to the uh, the the wilted willow where you can probably stay for the night. Um, as far as you guys want, it's completely up to you because you're in a major city now. You can go wherever you want to go, but here's where you went if you chose to go to this uh, this inn. Oh, my cat is crawling behind the monitor. I thought you were using like some really cool sound effects. Like, yeah, I was like, oh no, and the, there's a noise at the end, and you're being attacked. <laughs> Bar fight. Cat fight. So here's so here's where you guys would end up. Let me see if I can't get this cat out of here. Hold on one sec. Elric, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, there's so many dice. The rest of Rob's house, uh, Rob's uh, place is interesting as well. Uh, he's got some, some fine art. Oh god, I've made a curio cabinet, which is lovely. Yes, yeah, so you can see he was wearing the white vest today. Yeah, he was wearing the black vest last week. Hey, it's not after Labor Day yet, so he's still he's still good. Also has a modern day television, which is nice. You know, no tubes there. Okay, I'm You're back. Like beer four? Crisis averted. I'm on beer five, technically, because I had a beer before we started. Um, yeah, Rob is looking fucking sharp tonight. Um, okay, so you make it over to the Wilted Willow. What do you do? Yeah, just approach the, the, you know, the innkeep, the bar keep, whoever's behind the counter, and um, give the, the Church of Redemption signal. 
and say we're looking for lodgings for the night. Do you have control Game of your characters them. right now? Throwing up gang signs. Okay, yeah, you have control of your characters. The I'm front door is here, door is. if you oh. want to go through the door. Oh, yeah. Mm. Sifu Cloud is uh, is now uh, hosting us for three viewers. Thanks so much for joining the zombie party, man. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. What a great thing. Um, so you end up walking. <laughs> you walk through the front door, and you... Uh, this is the actually the the main barmaid. It's not the not the owner of the bar, but it's definitely like you know, uh, the main individual. Uh, that is what did I name her? It's a uh, uh, barmaid Bertha. So barmaid Bertha's there. She's um she's actually not a bad looking individual. Uh, Barmaid Bertha is sort of like, you know, she's, um, like, what's the word that, I that I'm looking for? Like, uh, like, Boxum. um, I'm imagining like, like Renaissance Festival. Yeah. So she looks, she, she looks good because like, she's wearing Boxum. like, you know, she got, she got a nice corset on and you know, she's got, you know, her Does she have vast tracts of land, vast tracts of land. She's got her goods she hanging out a little bit. Um, there's she's there. I want to do them. She's she's pretty good looking, and uh, barmaid Bertha looks at you and she goes, "Can I help you find adventurers?" Uh, yes, good lady. I'm Kent there on the Might of Tear. My companions and I uh, seek lodging. Oh, I can tell you're road. plenty mighty. I just kind of nod my head. I'm oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> what can I help you with, sir? Uh, just seeking rooms for me and my companions. And how many companions might be with you, may I ask? I only see two. Uh, there are five of us. We would need five rooms. Oh dear, five rooms. And she starts, like, you know, flipping through the book to see if you, she can fit you in. Um, yes, I believe I can fit you in. Two of you might need to bunk together, but I believe that we would have enough rooms for you. You said you are a member of what, might I ask? You, I'm sorry, uh, your... Attire was a bit, uh, uh, dis distracting. Just, I, of course I am with the Church of Tear. And I, you know, bust out my shield. And, you know, I, I understand we have an agreement with, with your fine establishment as well. As you, as you sort of bust out your shield, there's a royal guard who's, like, sitting, uh, here. And as I you, like, bust... my sword. My sword is still... Sh I'm just, You like bust out your shield and he, like, sort of, like, looks up. Like, he's, like, he's here. He doesn't want to be here. So he's, like, sort of, like, leaning in the back. He looks up and he goes, mm -hmm. And then you, like, put it down and he goes, mm -hmm. And, like, goes right back to where he was before. Uh... But she goes, oh yes, oh yes, ab absolutely. We would be more than happy. Uh, I can do three gold pieces for the lot of you. I'll plop them down on the counter. As you plop down three gold pieces, she picks them up and she goes, she goes, thank you so much. Please help yourselves. Do you need, do you need food, wine, perhaps? Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, we haven't we haven't had a, we've been on the road, so we haven't had a good meal in a few days. She uh she says to go ahead and grab grab a table anywhere, make yourselves at home. Uh, she will gladly bring you a, a hot meal and uh, and a nice 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 wine, a, a nice barley wine, unless of course you prefer mead. Whatever you guys fine with me, and then I just kind of head to one of the open tables. I look back as I walk, and I kind of motion everyone else to come on in. We're already in. We're already sitting down. So she sort of wanders off to get, like, the goods inside the kitchen and whatnot. Um, she pours, like, five large, um, large bowls of a nice, like, stew. And it's real good, too. It's got, like, you know, it's got, like, you know, that juicy beef inside there with, like, a little bit of carrots and a little bit of celery and, like, a nice broth. Um, and it's warm, and it's got a little, you know, a little bit of pepper, like, like, scraped over on the top. Super good. My girlfriend makes it all the time. It's fucking awesome. Um, it's, like, way better than the food that you had back in Weirwood. Like, this is clearly, um, higher quality food. You know, you can tell that if it wasn't grown in Mauricium, like, Mauricium was able to get these goods because of what Mauricium is. So she comes back to you and she delivers the the four different bowls and disappears and then comes back with four barley wines to give to each of you, assuming five, that you drink. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Five, man. 
Oh, five. She brings she brings five barley wines um, out to you, and she like sort of hands each one and sort of gives you a look, like asking if you drink, like if you if you'll take it um, before giving it to you. Does anybody not take the alcohol? Here we go again. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, uh, alcohol, my old familiar friend. So you all sort of like cheers together and uh, you know reminisce about like the the, the amazing things that you did. Uh, everyone's sort of laughing and having a good time. Like you, you feel warm, you feel comfortable. Um, the the fire is directly behind you, so it's sort of heating up this room, and you can feel like you, you feel safe here. Uh, whereas before you felt like you were sort of in danger and like anything could happen to you out in the wilderness, you feel like you're you're behind heavy walls and you're and you're actually safe here to, to do as you want. And you all laugh and have a good time. You talk about you know like oh wasn't that amazing when uh, when when Vincent was able to to like you know freeze that man in place and save that woman or oh did you see that statue that they were building it looked exactly like Cantharion or you know you share that that amazing story of like you know the little girl handing you that ribbon and how she tried to hide from you and like sort of show her face as you as you walked away and and so you're hearing all of the, these amazing tales and you also can notice that there's a bunch of different people inside here um that are sort of looking at you and sort of eavesdropping on the tales, but they're also having conversations themselves amongst about the things that are going on in Mauricium. But uh, you sort of have that whole night to, to, to reminisce on all of the, the, the greatness that you've done. Um, anything that anybody wants to share or anything specific that anybody wants to do? I want to ask Vincent, so you're talented, no doubt. Where does your inspiration come from? What do you draw on? Who guides your hand? Just don't know what's going on with myself, so I kind of just wing it from there. And I just I put an arm, a uh, hand on his shoulder, and I say, you know, tears watching on us all, and uh, know that as long as you travel with us, uh, we will help you on this journey. I get it. Thank you. So the. Oh, How old are you? <laughs> it's a good question. I lost track many years ago. <laughs> Probably LDL, honestly. Okay. Um, while you're sort of having this conversation, uh, Grisham is kind of like eavesdropping mm. around the room to try and see if he can pick up on anything that might be going on. Um, the uh, the you can hear that there's some talk about the death of Mance's father. Clearly that has gotten to Mauricium. That that Mance is now they're all they're all you know start talking to each other. Well did you hear his father died? Oh well I heard his father died. Well that means that old bastard's gonna have to be king now, isn't it? Bastard, why would you call him a bastard? Like clearly he had it clearly he had his mother. Yes, but have you ever met the man? You know, they sort of are are grumbling amongst themselves. Clearly Mance is seen as like a guy who although powerful and not he's 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 not well liked. You know, that sort of thing. And you can hear that, con or Grisham can hear, because he's actively, like, sort of trying to hear that conversation. And I, um, you know, I kind of look around, you know, as if I Oh, I should probably change this music, because, hold on, hold on one second. I should change this music, because we're actually in a tavern now. Sorry, I totally forgot about this. You're good. There we go. Oh, Classic. go on. Classic. Old Neverwinter going? Is that what this is? It's familiar, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. Go on. What were you uh, doing? But yeah, so I'm, I'm looking around for Kevin. Because I, um, you know, he's probably, he, he's not at the table. He's at the bar area, or is he still Yeah, I'm at the bar. I'm him. sitting at the bar. And I, um, I kind of motion over to him and, like, grab a chair from one of the other, like, that open chair and kind of, you know, point to it. Trying to invite me over with everybody else. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I'm saying out of character. Are you, is that what you're trying to do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Table? I'll just raise my glass at you and give you a nod. All right, I'll go up to the bar. 
plop down next to him and and just just look over and say, Kevin, you know, we don't know much uh, of each other. Uh, I know I know that you continue to follow uh, as you're bound, but I you know I'd like to know more of what drives you. What you know what is your purpose? I just came along for the coin. I smile and say, of, of course, there is there is coin to be had, but there's coin to be had in many things. What what brings you on our journey? Why you know why why choose this contract? Um, I just needed to step out of town for a little while. Ah, okay. Uh, some something troubling you? Something something you need help with? Uh, it's, it's nothing that, um, you should really concern yourself with, I don't think. It's more of a personal matter. I don't know that, um, being in your profession, you'd really, uh, understand, so it's probably best if, um, you just believe me when I say that it's all right. And I just kind of smirk and, and look away from him and, and say... You know, I, I too am, am but a man, though I attempt to embody Tyr's ideals uh, and know that I'm glad to help in any way I can uh, and look forward to traveling with you more. And then I just kind of nod at him and head back to the table. So the barley wine is sort of like seeping into your body now. You guys have been sitting there for a while, and and you know the the, the barmaid brought you another round, and you were like, hey, another round, and you cheered them all together and had a good time again. Um, and as you know, you continued to drink, you got a little bit more and more tired. So like the as the nightfall comes, people are sort of like going off into their rooms to uh, to be amongst themselves. Um, a couple of times people might have found a room to, uh, be with somebody else. Um, but, uh, but everyone sort of goes off in their own directions. Um, do you, do you, what do you do? Yeah, I think, I think the hour is late and I, um, uh, I think we should all rest up so that we can talk to Priscilla first thing in the morning. Start to head back. Rob, is there anywhere that I can go, um that's close by that I know of where there's going to be guild members um there is probably places that you could go um it's very it's very the, the night is it's very much like the middle of the night now so if you wanted to go out and find another place to stay you could um and you you know you're from Mauricium like you this is where you uh this is the part of the order that you joined up in. So you right. know of the different underground places that you could go to right now. Well, I'm not looking to, to spend the night anywhere else. I'm looking more for information about any rumors that, um, that anybody's actively looking for me. Or I'm being pursued. Or like maybe I really need to get back out of town right away. You um, could uh, go out and try and find some place if you wanted to. I want to. I want to do that once everybody else uh, from the party kind of um, sort of looks like they're done for the night. Okay, cool. So you're just sort of waiting for everybody else to fall asleep. Yeah. Well, they don't have to fall asleep, but like when they retire to their rooms or they're good and drunk or whatever, just whenever I can kind of slip out unnoticed. Okay, you can do that. Uh, Vincent, what are you doing? Good and drunk on about three or yeah. four barley wines. Yeah, I think I'm about ready to crash. So, Vincent, you want to take? Are you going to share a bed with somebody, or are you going to go and crash in your own room? If there's like a couch in a room, you know, I can. <laughs> not that big. You know, I'm going to say that Vincent can probably like. Share. You can probably get your own room back here. Put a blanket you... in a foot locker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Venator, where do you go? Uh, how many rooms did we get? You got four rooms. Two people have to shack up in the same room. Um, I'd go off by myself. Okay, so I'm gonna put you in here, the room next to the room next to Vincent. Cantharium, um, what do you course, do? I'd like my own room. Oh, okay. So you get to get the big room with the with the one big bed. 
And then Cantherion, I guess, plans to sleep with, uh, with... Kevin's gonna come on back. Grisham. <laughs> I want to do, I want to try to do a perception check when he comes back. Let me know. Okay. So, Grisham, you're gonna go out and, and leave the, leave the tavern then? Yes. And see if you can get some more information? I'm not gonna go very far, so if I can't find any information within, like, I would say a half an hour... Then I'll probably just return. To oh, the you have no idea how far you're gonna go. <laughs> so you get your own session, my friend. In the dark of What's night, in the dark of night, you choose to leave the Wilted Willow. As you leave the Wilted Willow, you only make it about like you know, let's say, mm, like two blocks away, before you are immediately jumped by three individuals. Um, one man is looking at you, and he has this, uh, he has this enormous, like, hair lip. You know, like his, like his lip is, like, stuck up on the top of his face. There's also a woman who appears to be, like, a little, a little gangly. Um, she is rather pale and has this, like, stringy hair. And then there's another guy who has, like, these piercings all over his face. Um, and you can recognize them. Uh, you recognize the woman to be Frida Loveless. You recognize, uh, the gentleman, or the guy with all of the piercings is, uh, what is this guy's name? What did I give him? It was, um, it was Frida Loveless. It was, uh, Shane Del Monte. And then the one that's in the middle is none other than Handsome Ned himself. Uh, and Handsome Ned sort of like, they, they sort of like bar off your path to make sure that you can't go anywhere. Uh, let me make sure that I'm on. Are these guys not on the token layer or are these guys on the background layer? Oh, they are on the background layer. Hold on, let me change this so that they're not on the background layer. Token layer, uh, token layer, and token layer. So they sort of like close off your path to make sure that you can't go anywhere. And Ned walks up to you and he says, uh, he says, What's well, good to see you, Grisham. Welcome back. Hey, Ned, how's it going? Long time. Did you take care of that thing I sent you? Well, that's a funny thing. Um, I got a little sidetracked. Yeah. Funny thing, isn't it? You know what's also funny, Grisham? I've never had much of a sense of humor. And as he says that, uh, Shane Del Monte like comes up and he like reaches his hand in your pocket and he pulls out the ring, and uh, he's holding on to the ring of the guy of the ring that you were supposed to pin on somebody like whenever you left here, but that you chose not to do. Uh, and Shane holds it up and he goes, "I got it, boss. I got it. I found it. It was right here in his pocket the whole time." He flicks it over to Ned, and Ned uh, Ned holds on to it, and he looks back at you. He goes, "Now, Grisham, I expected better out of you." Well, I was working on it, but there was a wedding, a murder, a dragon. Uh, the Reds were chasing each other around and patting themselves on the back. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have time, man. I didn't accept. I didn't ask you for excuses, Grisham. He grabs you by like your shirt collar and pulls you in to look at him in the face. I asked you for answers. Look, I'm not about to get strung up on my hindquarters because you can't take care of one easy problem. He looks back behind you. Were you followed? Or are you the only one here? I'm the only one here. They're all done for the night. And how do I know I can trust you? I trusted you to get rid of this ring. And I don't see it going anywhere right now. Well, you can hold on to it if you want, but otherwise you'll have to give it back so I can take care of it as soon as I can. He, uh, he tightens his grip on your collar. I reckon I can hold on to more than just this ring, Grisham. And as he says that, Shane Del Monte uh, pulls out a dagger from his waist um, and, like, holds it up, like, close to you. He says, Come on, that's not necessary. Not necessary. Now what says I don't just put this ring on you and toss you outside them gates? Well, you don't think I'm useful anymore? 
He, uh... He looks back. I want everyone to make... I want Cantherion to make a perception check right now. Just Cantherion. Oh, damn. Damn. You are here alone, son. <laughs> uh, Shane sort of like pulls like the knife knife closer to you and like, you know, you can feel it. You can feel the cold steel, the blade like against your cheek. And he says, uh, he says, I just don't know if we can trust you no more. I'll take care of it, Ned. There's no reason to get violent. Like, you heard about all that stuff in Werewood, I'm sure, didn't you? Everybody's talking about it. Well, that's where that's where the the damn priests uh, sent sent our little party that you guys put me in, and I haven't had a single chance to stick it on anybody worthwhile. You want it you want it to be on somebody worthwhile, don't you? Instead of just a farmer down the road. Oh, definitely. I mean. The only thing that matters is that they don't end up leading all this shit back to us. Well, I think were you, in fact, the one that caused all that shit back there in Werewood? I wouldn't say that I personally caused it, but I might have been around some people who kind of caused it. You heard what's happening, don't you? There's a whole lot of work over there in Maricor now. Well, I think that's where we're going to be headed, so I could plant it on someone over there if you just give me a little more time. We can take this all the way to Maricor and be completely done with it. He looks over He looks over to Frida Loveless. I don't think you're going to get to Maricor, Grisham. Yeah, you ain't heard. They've been calling the war drums. Shit's war not going to... Shit's not going to be easy out here in Mauricium anymore. Tell you what, Grisham, here's the thing. I'm gonna give you a second chance. You take this ring, and you make this man disappear. And you ain't gonna see us again. I reckon if you do, we're gonna have some... trouble. That's completely acceptable with me. He, uh, he lets go of your collar, and you sort of fall back. He flicks the ring over to you, and you sort of catch it in your hands. And he goes, Not again, Grisham. You make it disappear, or I'm going to make sure you never see the light of day again. Worse than that, I'm going to make you wish you never see the light of day again. Absolutely. It will be taken care of. He uh he sort of walks away and like leaves the other two there, but as he walks away he like flicks his hand in the air. And as he flicks his hand in the air you can see he's like flicking you like the he's almost flicking you like three one in like um in an offensive way. He's almost using it as like the middle finger. Like like taunting it over you. Um Handsome Ned, as far as you know, has he's not he's 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 got strikes all over him. Like he he gets caught doing bad shit all the time. But it's because he likes to flaunt what what it is that he is. You know, he sees himself as powerful and he has this gang. He's not the head of the three one by any means. He's just like a major soldier inside their whole organization. But um he is sort of flaunting it as as he does that to you. Um Frida follows him off and sort of leaves you there with, uh, with, I'm sorry, it's Del Monte, Shane Del Monte. And, uh, and Shane looks at you and goes, Look, y'all, Grisham, I, uh, you, you, me, we was never, like, good friends or nothing, but, uh, I reckon you gotta get rid of it. Or, you know, Ned's gonna get rid of ya. Yes, thank you for your astute observation. I appreciate it. I just, I just thought, like, you know, I looked at him and I thought, you know, he sounds like he might kill you, you know. Um, yeah. 
can go. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm coming, Dad. I'm coming, Dad. And he like you know wanders off and and fo- follows him and leaves you alone inside the uh, inside this dark alleyway in Mauricium. I'm gonna kind of stand there for a minute and gather my thoughts and calm my nerves a little bit, and then uh, I have this little little pouch uh, I keep uh, on my belt, and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, dip into that, and I'm gonna uh, calm myself down even further. Oh, so you're doing a little bit of drugs out there? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a roll right now. All right, you're safe. Um, you're sort of like, do you rub it in your eye? Is that where you're putting yes, it? Yes, yes. So you rub it, you're rubbing these, uh, what's it called? What's the drugs again? It's called Raven Eye. Raven Eye. So you're rubbing the Raven Eye, like, into your eye, and it's, is it like, it's like cocaine, right? It's like, um, uh, let's see, I wrote it down. I believe uh, it's like cocaine, where if you do a lot of it, it can turn into like mushrooms. Um, it, it um, okay. What I wrote down is uh, it's an addictive drug that causes the user to feel as though they're in a dream state. Uh, it's na- it's made out of naturally occurring ingredients. It's not magical or anything. Um, but it's a black powder or paste, and you can take it um, orally, like you can dissolve it into a liquid, or you can rub it like into the lower eyelid. To, to hasten the onset of its effects. So you so you um, sort of like rub it into your eye. Yeah, into the eyelid. And, and uh, oh, go ahead. Um, and then its effects are, um, you feel kind of numb to danger or stress because nothing really feels real. You know, you feel like you're almost like asleep a little bit or like you just kind of walk around in a haze and you're like, Oh, it's okay. It's it's not a big deal. It's this dream. I'll just wake up in a minute. You know, like nothing feels like it can hurt you. Um, like Cowboy Bebop. Right, but it, but it also uh, like if you have um, it can have the like the opposite effect too. If you have like naturally occurring um, uh, phobias or something, it can have like an extreme effect where it causes like extreme terror. Okay, uh, I'm gonna like say that, like so. scarecrow status. I'm gonna say right. that you like rub this shit into your eye. And you like wander over to like this tree to just sort of like sit down and relax in this dream state. Um, and you can feel like the relaxation starting to come like over your body. But as you're doing this, like, you know, you can feel that like some there's some tension in the air. And you can like, as you place your hand against the ground, you can feel like there's this intense warmth underneath like the cobblestones. Um, and at first it makes you feel like you can, like you're, like you're safe, but later on you can feel that the, the warmth is getting stronger and stronger. And as you look up, you see like a vision of your mother and your father, like standing in front of you. And then they slowly like seep down into the, and your mother and father are like this. It's your mother and father. It's clearly their silhouettes, but they're covered in like this ink like that dragon had and they slowly like seep down into the cobblestone and disappear the same way that that inky shit did inside the inside the stone rocks um and they're just disappeared and and gone in front of you well that doesn't make me feel calmer because it's actually it's actually an addiction so whenever whenever gershom feels um stressed out pretty bad or or especially after like he's forced to commit like murder or something like it not defending himself so like the bandits at the at the in the town and stuff that wasn't really stressful for him because it was mostly defending um but when he's done work for the 314 um you know the guilt and stuff has driven him to kind of become addicted to this this feeling and this drug so that's I think I think the reaction that you're having to the drug right now is a mixture of the drug and the stress, but also the unknown stress of the world. So this might be something that you haven't seen before, but right. now it's like your mind is coping with your own personal stress, but also the stress of the world that you saw before. In like a badass drug-induced way. So after that whole thing happens, it's still the middle of the night. You can still make it back to your bed if you want to try and make it back to your bed. 
Yeah, I'll I'll try to make it back to my bed after you know like maybe twenty or thirty minutes, something like that. So you're out here like sort of enjoying enjoying your high, hoping that no guards come and harsh your mellow, um, and you make it back to the uh, make it back. <coughs> Whew, sorry, you make it back to the tavern, um, and everything's exactly the way you left it. It's just a little bit later, and everyone's asleep. Uh, there's still a little bit of music going on because there's still people up. And as you walk past this, the the guard who's sitting there, the guard sort of like wakes up from his sleep and goes, <laughs> and looks at you, and he's like, oh, and then goes back down back to sleep again. Um, but you make it back to the tavern, and the only bed that's open is the one with Cantharion. Um, I'll head in there and try to be quiet and not disturb him. Go ahead and make a go ahead and make a sneak roll for me to see if you can make it in there without waking up Cantharion. So stealth. Yeah, go ahead and do a stealth roll. Yeah, that's pretty fucking good. Cantharion does not wake up. Like you are as you're as you're walking in the room, you like can hear like the board creak and it's like, Err! and it's like, you know you hear Cantharion go. <laughs> Well, he certainly didn't. Might have cheered. Leave either. And he's uh, and he and he like goes back to sleeping again. He's like, savor werewolf. And he's like, you know, dreaming of all like these amazing things. It's, it's, he's speaking his titles in his sleep. Um, <laughs> but you end up making it all the way back into the bed, and uh, and you sleep there all the way until morning. Nothing to happen until morning. Uh, so the next morning, you guys wake up, and. Uh, and reconvene back into the back into the main quarters. Yeah, I want to head out to the the Church of Redemption to to meet with Priscilla and and hopefully Jacob. Does everybody agree on that? Who is Priscilla? Priscilla is the eyes of Tear. Um, she's sort of the In head Cantarion's of Darion's words. She's the head of the Church of Redemption, sort of. Um, they have. Yeah, imagine like a high priestess sort of thing, but there are no preachers or, pre- I mean, it's it's weird. It's Kent Can- is the one who like sort of does it, but I put Priscilla on the top because uh, Cantharion didn't make a hierarchy for it, so I created my own hierarchy. Uh, Priscilla is the top of that hierarchy in his in his church. Yeah, there's like the so, the Church of Tear. It's it's a council, right? And the council, um, there's no like like Rob saying there's no like really like person in charge but there's always people that you know are going to have a little bit more knowledge and be a little bit better at things in general so those are the ones who are kind of sought out um so Priscilla is one of those people yeah there's it's the, the council of the just so they're all they're all kind of seen as equals like there's no one there's no like hierarchy per se but yeah there's always those people that you know like oh so and so is going to know this one and why are you after the eyes of tear she sees all. Actually, uh, Cantharion has no idea what her power is, but you pretty much nailed it on the head. She's like the omniscient eyes of Tear. As you can tell, Tear's like, like the Tear Tear's tearing system um, is pretty much like self-explanatory. The heart of Tear can like see truth. The might of Tear just happens to be really fucking strong. Um, what's is Grisham looking like? Pretty rough or anything? Like I don't know. How is Grisham looking? Um, well, Grisham always kind of looks a little bit malnourished and sickly, anyway. Um, so he, I mean, it is from <laughs> like a, like a drug addict would look like, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but he, it's it's more because he doesn't really care about his appearance, um, as opposed to like. Like uh, not, like he, he he looks rumpled all the time. Like his clothes look, you know, frumpy, and his hair is not usually like combed or anything. It's not dirty, but it just he doesn't really care about upkeeping his appearance. So he has like fresh out of bed look, like he slept in his clothes for the last month, and you know, uh, and then of course he has this sort of like sickly like kind of kind of a little bit too skinny uh you know drug addled 
look to him. I was going to have a lot of the females hitting on Grisham, and I'm really glad that I've had them hit on uh, Cancerion and Vincent instead, because it sounds like he's not a very attractive human being. Well, it's, it's not so much that, I mean, physically he's not unattractive, he's kind of average. But because of his upbringing in the brothels and stuff, he has um, he has the ability to like talk to people of like different races and customs, kind of like how they're normally accustomed to be taught. It sounds like he just doesn't care how he looks. Like he just yeah, does he not give a fuck. Yeah. Well, we all were drunk last night, so I think that we all would look pretty rough. I guess you know. I don't know. How does Vincent look right now? Sure. <laughs> Sharp as always. You, know? <laughs> you like woke up in the morning and like fucking putting beard oil like in the t- twisting this thing up right here. Yeah, you gotta have that. Woke up in the morning looking like P Diddy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm ready to roll. If you guys are. Ah. And not no not no Grisham. <laughs> yeah, not Grisham kind of rolling, but <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you could yeah, if you asked looks nicely. Fresh as a daisy, and she's all just like, "I woke up like this." Hashtag or something. <laughs> when really you've been awake for like three hours, and you'd be like, "Oh Jesus, I gotta put all this shit in the top knot." Like, so you guys all wake up. Um, you meet up. You convene. Do you all decide that you're gonna go to the go to the the church? It's fine. With yeah. Yeah. So with me. All right. In that case. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and take you guys over here. I'm having flashbacks. So you enter the church, and uh, to to your um, it, it it makes you it makes you feel good to actually as you enter, you see that uh, not only is Jacob the heart of tear there, but also Priscilla. So clearly Jacob had made it this far uh, without anything bad happening. Um, who am I missing on here? Cantharion. Um, so the whole group enters and you enter, you enter into the church, which is like this enormous like cathedral. And there's like this main commons area and over towards the right, there's like, you know, there's like, there's like sort of passageways all over the place. But as you go up this winding staircase into the top, there's this one area that has like these stained glass windows all over the place. Imagine it's like a large war room, but it's not a war room because the church, the, the church of redemption doesn't go to war, but it's like this main room inside there. And there's this giant statue to to tear that's in the back with you know his hand out and back in back back on his backside is like his sword um but you're all sort of like gather on this table that has like the supercontinent on it and uh, priscilla looks to cantharion and she goes well jacob told me that i should be expecting you cantharion and as always you've done nothing but impress and i just i bow and and give the the signal she uh, she bows and gives you the signal back. Um, she's dressed in so Jacob was dressed in like that like I, d- I described it as World of Warcraft armor because he had like that one large pauldron and like all the rest of the armor. She's dressed a little bit more casually. Like she probably doesn't leave the 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 church that much. So she has sort of like a a decorative vest that goes down into a decorative like longer skirt. Um, it's still, it's very ornate, but it's still, it, but it's still very, like, officer E. Like, if she walked around, someone would look at her, and, and she, she would, like, gather attention, because all the stuff that she's wearing is just, very, it's very nice. And she's, and she's a, rel- she's a relatively attractive woman. Nice um, armor, or nice, like, clothing? Nice clothing. She's probably not, like, well armored, because she probably doesn't go out in combat all that much. Um... But she is, but she's there, and she looks to you, and uh, she uh, she turns to Jacob, and she says, she says, so we mentioned that we were going to speak about what happened before, uh, Cantharion. Perhaps you can provide some more insight as to what you have found. I wish it were more. Uh, we were obviously looking for Jacob and found him in, in a difficult situation, as I'm sure you've already discussed, and um, you know we're able to to track down a beast that was besieging the town, essentially, looking at maybe even picking off 
random passers by, and uh, this this beast is unlike anything I've ever seen, and certainly not natural. That that liquid uh, in in that vial that Jacob returned with it coated the monster entirely. I believe you have the flask. Oh right, <laughs> I what I. Let's rewind in time, and I say, I, this liquid, <laughs> this she, uh, liquid was coating the beast entirely. She takes the flask from you and looks at the flask and says, Well, this is bizarre. Please, bring in our guest. And uh, as the door from the back opened, uh, you notice, where is... There we go. A dwarf enters in from the back, and he says, uh, he says, Oi! Jask for me. And uh, Priscilla turns to him. She goes, I believe you've seen something like this, didn't you? Cantharian, did you describe it as as a beast that was covered in some sort of black liquid? Nod nah, to both of them. And, and yeah, it, it fell off of the beast as we attacked it. It um, seemed to coat it entirely. And we actually pursued it. Uh, we must have ridden at full speed for for roughly 30 minutes until eventually we brought it down and it seeped into this chasm and simply vanished. It left behind bones of a creature, which, um, and I motioned to, to Venator and Vincent, which uh, these two were able to determine was something certainly arcane in nature and, and almost a parasite, as Jacob uh, added to it. The uh, the dwarf turns to you and says, Oh, I, it definitely sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, we fought something rather similar to what you've seen. I said, well, do tell. Do you have anything, any other insight that you've gleaned? Or, or do you know its origins at all? He says, uh, no, I don't know its origins. But I reckon we can find them out. I mean... We did capture it, after all. Well, let's let's go investigate together then. Let's see this beast. He uh he nods to you and points to the map. He goes, "Well, then all we have to do is find my friends." And he looks back up to you and says, "Uh, and by the way, my name's Shorty, Shorty Ironhide." And uh, we are going to stop the session right there. Um, so Shorty Ironhide has pointed you out and told you that they have captured a beast that sounds like it's similar to the one that you have just found. Um, yeah, I hate to stop it, but it's getting really late, guys. <laughs> uh, but I'm so happy to have so many people hanging out with us tonight. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we meet up and play uh, normally on Saturday mornings or uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, sometimes we hit up different days on that, but in case you want to catch us, uh, I do always announce it on Facebook if you are friends with me on Facebook, but if not, you can always follow me on Twitter at uh, Captain Robbed is my Twitter handle. Uh, if you want to hop on there and follow us on Twitter, I'd be more than happy to uh, announce every time that we're going to play, or you can follow us right here, and we'll announce every time that we go live. Um, with that being said, my name is Robert Steinberg. I'm an aspiring actor in Los Angeles, an aspiring, a aspiring voice actor in Los Angeles, California. Um, these are all of my friends who play with us. Uh, Cantharion, who is my buddy Chris. Chris, is there anything you want to plug before we leave? No, just, uh, you know, thanks for another awesome session and uh, look forward to getting together again soon. Uh, I basically just hang out in, with these guys and moderate uh, this guy's chat, so you'll hear about him in a minute. That's, uh, that's it. Next up is going to be Landon. Landon, you got anything you want to plug before we leave? Uh, nothing much, really. Uh, I stream on Twitch. Try to do every day. I'm a mod in, in the stream as well. It's Bruce Wayne. You can find everything there. That's about it. And underneath Landon, we have Jillian, the lovely Jillian. Jillian, you got anything you want to plug this week? Uh, yeah, you can check me out on, on Patreon, uh, Jillian Ivy. Check out some of my art. Put the link in the, the chat. Thanks for everyone who followed tonight. You have a great one. And Kevin, you got anything you want to plug this week, man? No, not really. Um, just thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for a good session. And uh, 
I hope uh, some some of the folks come back again next time we play. Absolutely. And last but not least, my best friend Joe, who's right underneath me right here. Uh, Joe, is there anything that you want to plug before uh, before we leave?